Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the first part of our series, What If Deku Becomes Cyber Sleuth? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Rush Alias from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. This world abounds with tales of aspiring heroes facing down all sorts of events, joining forces with allies to take on foes and save the world from danger. And yet there are those who play minor roles in these accounts or fail to appear altogether. Once I'd reach a certain age I started to consider that I may not be this world's hero type, that I am just a background character in this world, and I appear in none of its stories. Still someday I dream that I can be a hero. This is me and this is my story. Izuku was running through the streets of Mustafa one morning. He was trying his best to make it on time for school. Unfortunately for him things didn't work out that way. He felt the ground shake as he saw a large man with shark-like features appear in his path. The man was seemingly battling several other individuals. It was then that he recognized the man was a villain and the individuals he was battling were none other than some pro-heroes. The police had already barricaded the area to prevent any civilians from getting too close, but that didn't stop Izuku. He pushed himself all the way to the front of the barricade with his hero analysis notebook in hand. He began scribbling down notes for the various heroes that appeared as well the villain, even commenting on the rising star Kamui Woods. I recognize that look. You're a fanboy aren't you? The man exclaimed. He must have noticed me documenting. Izuku thought. Izuku merely nodded as the man continued. I take it you want to be a hero as well? The man asked. Yes more than anything. Izuku answered, with a big smile. Well I'm sure if you work hard you'll get there eventually. The man laughed. Izuku was about to comment when another hero entered the fray. This hero was Mount Lady, who was actually debuting for the first time. Ruark. The bellow which screamed with pain blasted into Izuku's ears. It made him jolt, widen his eyes and tense his arms. Did you hear that? Izuku asked the man. Hear what? The man replied confused. That roar. Izuku explained. Sorry kid. Didn't hear anything. Maybe it was just the crowd cheering. The man explained to Izuku. I'm sure I heard something, but none of the crowd seemed phased in the slightest. Must be the villain of the crowd. Izuku thought, still in denial that it was just his imagination. Elsewhere on the top one of the buildings a figure was observing the fight. What made this figure different from the others was that she seemed to be glitching in and out of the world. They too had heard the roar as well. They would have left to find it had she not noticed that Izuku had also heard it. A small smile crept upon her lips. How interesting. The figure said to herself before she faded from sight completely. Mejidraman howled in pain as he was slammed into the floor. He felt his rage build as the power within him began to grow. The hazard symbol on his chest began to glow. He forced himself back up and turned to his opponent. A humanoid lion with sickly purple skin and hollow eyes, the lion's claws and fangs were blood red with a tattered black cape hung over its shoulders. No words were spoken, there was no need for any. Mad Bancho Lehman was intending to kill. Medjidraman was inclined to do the same, remnants of his sane mind contradicted the murderous impulse. The lion lunged for him with a fist that radiated in purple energy. The punch connected straight into Medjidraman's bony chest right on his hazard symbol. The dragon recoiled as the impact reverberated through its body. However, the dragon wasn't done. He gripped the lion with his own claws and coiled its serpentine lower body around its target. Medjidraman exerted the accumulation of its power. Medjidraman's body flashed white. Mad Bankalaman could only stare with wide eyes as he realized what would proceed. The light and heat were emitted from the eruption, which caused a spherical blast that vaporized the ground and was followed by a chorus of rumbles rampaged through the world. Space warped around the epicenter of the suicidal attack as the ground tore into a distorted portal. Debris along with what little remained of the two fighters gravitated toward the portal. Both of their bodies were disassembled as they seemingly shrank as they fell into a portal. Elsewhere the fight between the two was being overlooked by a small red dinosaur-like creature with a staff that resembled a giant microphone. Next to him was a giant humanoid butterfly of sorts. The butterfly human turned to the red dinosaur. Those two dot 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 they seem to have torn a bigger hole in reality than I thought. I've already booted up a repair program to try and minimize the damage. She informed the dinosaur. That's good. We need to keep any rogue ones from slipping through. Marcus can handle anything thrown at him, but he's way past his prime now. Whether he will acknowledge it or not. The dinosaur added. Butterfly looked at him for a second pondering something but never speaking. If you have something to say then say it. Silence equals consent right. That was Hudi's motto correct. The dinosaur prompted. You are correct, your majesty. The butterfly said before bringing up an image. The image was none other than Izuku Midoriya. So you found another one. The king answered. That's good. Where is he? The dinosaur asked. He's in the human world. The butterfly answered. The king seemed to be silent for a minute taking in exactly what was said by his advisor. The human world dot 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 been a long time since I heard of anybody worthwhile originating from there. How is it? Well as far as I can tell superpowers have suddenly manifested over the past few centuries allowing for humans to become heroes and villains. 
These quirks, as they are called, have a huge variation in capabilities. Some are purely cosmetic with appearances, while others can be more subtle like making some a lie detector. She explained, quirks dot 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 so humans have actually gotten stronger and more resistant dot 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 that's good I suppose. Although now I'm even more worried about having any rogue Digimon enter their world. Digimon already caused problems before when they were just influenced by regular humans with a lot of raw emotional energy but now that humans have powers of their own. The king shuddered. He then turned his attention back to the boy at large. And what about him? What is his quirk? The king asked. Interesting story about that. The butterfly smiled. Deku you quirkless loser. Izuku flinched as he saw Bakugo slam his fist down on the desk. An explosion erupted from his palms. Nervously Izuku looked up at his childhood friend turned bully. Kachin. Izuku said weakly. I told you don't call me that. The blonde-haired explosion user reminded. He snatched the book Izuku was writing his notes in. An explosion erupted from the hand holding the book, leaving scorch marks on it. Izuku winced as he saw his burnt book get tossed out the window. He should have known this would happen. Should have kept the book in his bag and have something else out. Moments earlier the teacher had been discussing about their options for careers in the future, or at least he was supposed to. The man merely stated how he knew everyone would try for the hero course to which the entire class had erupted in cheers except Izuku. However, Bakugo was quick to boast his dominance explaining he had applied to UA. High as it was the only place worthy of him. One could argue that he might have been in over his head. Unfortunately said argument was null and void. Bakugo had it all dot 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 he aced the mock exams and was gifted with an amazing quirk. So of course no one was going to doubt him getting in. Then the teacher mentioned how Izuku wanted to apply as well. Most people laughed and jeered at him. How could he make it into the most prestigious hero school if he didn't even have a quirk? Bakugo took the chance to mock to be personally offended that Izuku was trying to steal the spotlight of being the only student from their school to enter UA. He didn't try to attack him but the teacher stopped the fight midway. Telling of Bakugo for using his powers during class and also telling off Izuku was instigating a fight dot 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 how had he reached that conclusion Izuku would never know but he had unpleasant theories. Now that class was over and the teachers were gone though. Izuku winced as he felt himself get slammed into the wall by Katsuki. His bully grabbed him by the collar and stared him down. Listen you pathetic loser. Most people can tell greatness just by looking at someone. When I make my debut as the greatest hero of all time everyone will talk about how I rose above this dump of a school as the only one to make it into UA. And I'm not going to let some quirkless wimp ruin my origin story. Bakugo growled. After all I am a perfectionist. He finished. Safe to say the point was made by Bakugo. Bakugo was about to leave, he came up with a parting sentence. You know if you want to get a quirk so bad there might be an easy way. Wish really hard for one in your next life and then take a swan dive off the roof. He laughed as he walked away with his lackeys. Izuku clenched his fist and was about to comment when Bakugo turned around and glanced at him, a mini explosion emitting from his hand. Did you say something? He asked, provoking Izuku to try. Izuku lost whatever anger he had then and there. Outside the school an old man who was waiting for his charge noticed the burnt book land in the nearby fish pond. Kids these days. He muttered as he went and fished the book out. He opened the book checking the pages to make sure it was dry. Considering it fell from a classroom it was probably best to assume it was an accident or bullying. Either way the old man would wait to see if anyone came to reclaim it. He glanced through the book noticing the details made about the heroes and villains. He also noted the book was labeled as volume 13 meaning there were at least 12 other books. The old man whistled to him. The analysis was pretty impressive as well the suggestions that were written about the quirks. Reminded him of an old comrade from back in his youth. He heard footsteps and turned his attention to a young boy approaching. The young boy seemed to glance at the book but he seemed nervous and his clothes seemed a bit. Burnt, excuse me young man, is this yours? Said the elderly man. He asked as he offered the book. The boy's eyes seemed to widen as he reached out and gently took the book explaining that it was. Would you mind explaining why it was being used as fish food? The man asked the boy. Oh well you see I. Tripped. The old man interrupted. That's the oldest excuse in the book for random injuries. I've seen a lot of people say they trip only to later learn that there was someone else involved. The old man then chuckled a bit to himself. Why don't you tell me what really happened? Izuku, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku stated his name. Izuku, tell me what happened. The man had a slightly sterner tone. Izuku pondered about it, examining the old man. He didn't really seem like much but he knew looks could be deceiving. Nonetheless it was actually kind of nice to finally have someone other than his mom listen to him and even then this man seems to see right through him. So he explained the situation, choosing to omit some crucial details like names of some individuals just to be careful. The old man was paying attention and he did not seem to like what he was hearing. HMMPH. What has this world come to? If people like him can become heroes then there really isn't a difference between heroes and villains anymore. The man grumbled. Back in my day the measure of a hero was someone who didn't need any incentive. They would do whatever they could to save or help people regardless of what limited them. The person you're talking about is just a villain who hides behind a hero's mask. The man explained. That's not true. Tachin is going to be an amazing hero someday especially with his quirk. Izuku added. And that's another issue. A quirk does not make a hero. A hero makes himself. 
The man added. However, he didn't let Izuku respond as he quickly changed the topic. You're a bright boy, the man said as he motioned to the notebook. But sometimes you just need to listen to your gut instead of overthinking things. You'll become a great hero even if you are quirkless. With it the man walked away. Wait what's your name? Izuku asked. I'll tell you my name when you become a hero. The man said as he walked away. But if it helps, and quirkless as well. The man added. The last part seemed to shock Izuku. Remember don't overthink things. Izuku looked at the book as he let the man's words register. He could be a hero without a quirk. He could be a hero. The old man had walked off to another part of the school as he saw a group of students leaving. One student in particular, a young girl, approached him. Marcus, what are you doing here? She asked. His royal loudness has assigned me another student. The man laughed. I figured I'd scout him out. You're scouting another student? Here. The girl asked. Yes, Marcus said. Tell me is anyone bothering you about not having a quirk? The man asked. No, I've mostly just kept to myself like usual. Why? The girl responded. Good. I heard some things earlier. Very unpleasant things from a quirkless kid being bullied. He muttered. Izuku Midoriya. The girl asked. Wait a minute. Is he the new student? You know him. Everyone knows him. She answered. This made the man even more furious. If everyone knew the boy and his bullying why did the teachers let it continue? The man grinded his teeth. He knew why. The bully had such an impressive quirk and it would have been a real shame to ruin the promising career of such a gifted young elder didn't get to voice his anger though as a beeping sound distracted both him and the girl from their thoughts. The girl took out her phone. Looks like I've got a job to do. She told the old man. Mind if I tagged along? I want to evaluate your progress the elder said. You just want an excuse to punch someone. The girl answered. It's pretty obvious. Fine. You got me but I still want to come. The old man told her. Izuku was walking home thinking about the words the old man had said. He could be a hero even without a quirk. He sincerely wondered how much the man wanted those words affected him. It was something he had always told himself that he needed to hear. Thinking back to his all-time favorite hero, All Might. Izuku lifted his head up, muttering to himself about becoming a hero. Unbeknownst to him what little remained of Medjidraman after his fight was still around the area but that wasn't the only thing. Another villain, one made of slime was also in the area. The villain revealed himself to Izuku making himself as big and intimidating as possible before grabbing Izuku. What do we have here? A medium-sized invisibility cloak. The villain said with a sadistic grin as he forced the slime into Izuku's mouth. Don't struggle kid, I'm just taking over your body. It will be over in 45 seconds. The villain grinned. Izuku wanted to scream for help. He felt his body become weak as he had no strength to fight back. He kept struggling as he felt the fear flood through his body as he desperately tried to escape. The former Mejidraman's eyes snapped open as he felt a surge of raw emotion flood his system. He felt the pain and despair of an individual and that triggered something within him. The once great dragon was now reduced to a human-sized lizard but that didn't reduce his ferocity. The former dragon arrived at the tunnel entrance where Izuku was being held. Letting out a loud ear-splitting roar it gained the attention of both the villain and his victim. The slime villain didn't know what to expect when he saw the dragon-like creature appear. He certainly didn't expect it to charge at him with its razor-sharp claws. He tried to fend it off but the beast knocked away its tentacles and blasted some apart with a fire blast from its mouth. The creature lunged at him forcing the slime villain to use the boy as a meat shield. Izuku winced as he felt the creature bite him but oddly enough he didn't feel the teeth sink into him like how he was expecting it to feel. The creature had simply gripped him with its mouth and was now pulling him away from the slime. It pulled hard as it stamped its feet into the ground until finally Izuku was sent flying to the far side of the tunnel. Izuku looked up at his savior, a red and white dragon-like creature with an open wound in its chest. Unfortunately the villain was not out. He quickly wrapped himself around the creature immobilizing him. Well I suppose you'll do instead. He grinned as he forced himself into the dragon. Izuku watched as now the same horror he had witnessed was now inflicted onto someone else. Only this time it was worth seeing as how the slime was also being forced into the wound on the chest. Before he even realized what was going on Izuku's feet began to move as he rushed the slime villain this time. You really don't give up. Don't you kid, the villain said as he launched his tentacles at Izuku. The boy barely managed to dodge the attack and tossed his bag at the villain as a means of distracting him. Why you? The villain cursed as he tried to get his bearing back. Izuku reaches for the creature trying to pull the slime off him. He stared into the creature's eyes and for a second he saw them dilate before they turned back into slits. You didn't think I was just going to leave you. Izuku told the creature trying to make light of the hopeless situation. The creature, smiled, before it began thrashing more violently than ever unfortunately the slime villain had recovered and had once again gripped Izuku. If you are so keen on being together then you can die together. The slime villain said, have no fear, a voice boomed in the tunnel, for I am here. The slime villain and Izuku's eyes widened as they saw All Might appear. Texas smash, All Might said as he rushed forward. He delivered a powerful blow that separated Izuku and the creature from the slime villain. The last thing Izuku saw was All Might's silhouette and the creature landing in his discarded phone before bursting into a flash of light. All Might look around trying to figure out what to do in this situation. 
The slime villain had been defeated and the hostage saved, however both were unconscious. Reaching into his bag he got two large bottles of soda which he promptly emptied and then sealed the slime villain inside them. He looked around for the strange creature he had seen. It had just disappeared. He would need to look into that later. That creature despite its appearance had tried to help the child. It was obviously wounded and the least All Might could do was get it checked on. Looking back at the boy, All Might quickly gathered the scattered contents from the boy's bag. He checked the boy's phone to ensure it was all right, which it was. Strangely enough, All Might have noticed a strange hazard-like watermark that appeared over the boy's wallpaper which so happened to be All Might himself. Must be a new program. The hero mused as he realized the boy was a fan. Looking over the boy's notebook, All Might have looked through finding a name. Izuku Midoriya. He noted. Taking a pen, he signed his name on one of the blank pages. Hey, wake up. Wake up. All Might repeated as he gently slapped Midoriya's cheek. Izuku's eyes opened slowly. The first thing to fill his vision was the sight of All Might towering over him. Being the fanboy that he was Izuku's reaction was as silent and as calm as you can imagine. He screamed and freaked out from sheer enthusiasm. He went over to his notebook quickly to get the hero to sign it only to realize it was already signed, causing him to fanboy even harder. All Might merely laughed at his enthusiasm. He showed Izuku the captured remains of the villain. Then it crossed Izuku's mind about one important thing that he forgot. The monster that saved me. Where is it? Izuku asked. All Might wanted to frown but did his best not. He didn't know where the creature was and it had seemingly just disappeared. The boy's reaction clearly showed that he was not associated with the creature. He would need to sugarcoat this somehow. It ran off somewhere. It looked injured but don't worry. I'll look around the area later and see if it's still around. He told Izuku as he prepared to jump. Izuku tried to convince him to stay to ask him some questions but All Might insist he didn't have time and he took a mighty leap soaring across the city. It was only when he was in mid-flight did he realize that he had stowaway. He tried to pursue Izuku to let go, forgetting momentarily that they were mid-air and very far away from the ground. Luckily Izuku reminded him of the situation. Blood trickled from All Might's mouth, he had to land soon. He needed to get away from the boy as soon as possible. He had found a suitable spot and landed. He told the boy to knock and that someone would answer the door. However Izuku continued to pursue his chance of getting an answer from All Might. Do you think I could be a hero? Izuku asked, even without a quirk. Izuku stared at the retreating form of his idol. He felt like he had been kicked in the gut. While All Might had tried his best to sugarcoat it compared to others, the answer was still the same. He couldn't be a hero because he was quirkless. Standing alone on the rooftop he felt really small as he leaned on the railing. He was only lying to himself all those years. He knew the answer even back then. After all everyone had been saying it from the start but he was just ignorant. He saw the tears falling from his face and watched as they dropped to the ground becoming smaller and smaller before they landed unceremoniously on the ground without even being noticed by anyone passing by. So are we going to get some bread now or do you need a minute? A voice spoke behind him. Izuku almost jumped at the sound almost falling over had it not been for a familiar creature holding him by the shirt before resting him down. The red dinosaur stared at him with wide pupils looking much more docile now. I'm Gilman by the way. The dinosaur introduced itself. I'm Izuku. Izuku Midoriya. He responded. Glancing at the dino several thoughts flowed through his head. How long have you been standing there? Izuku asked. Gilman pondered for a bit before giving an answer. While I wasn't standing there. I was listening ever since he told you to knock on the door. Gilman answered. Also what's a quirk? The Dino asked. Wait you don't know what a quirk is? Izuku asked. Gilman merely shook his head. Well it's like a superpower that humans have, like how you look like a red dinosaur dot 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 that's a quirk. Izuku explained. Um, I'm not a human. I'm a Digimon. Gilman told him. Digimon. Digital monster. Gilman elaborated. So let me get this right. There are virus, vaccine and data type Digimon all of which are strong and weak to each other like rock paper scissors. Izuku mumbled as he wrote into a blank notebook he had for school. His emergency notebook just in case he needed to start the next volume or the current volume got destroyed in a fiery explosion. Yes, Gilman answered as they walked. It was funny. Izuku had his dream shattered not more than four minutes ago and already he was moving on from it in favor of the newly discovered Digimon. It was strange as if all that negative emotions he felt were now being eaten away by Gilman. Of course meeting All Might and Gilman weren't the only thing that happened to him that day. He really should have paid more attention to his surroundings. Izuku and Gilman were walking through a part of town that seemed strangely quiet. It was probably due to an explosion nearby where no doubt a villain attack had occurred. Had it not been for Gilman, Izuku might have accidentally strayed back to it just out of habit. However that peaceful evening was cut short when Gilman's head perked up and his pupils narrowed its slit. Izuku, company, Gilman growled in a more animalistic way. It reminded Izuku of when he met the slime villain an hour ago. The dinosaur stepped in front of Izuku, no doubt going to defend his friend from any threat coming. Izuku scanned the area trying to see anything out of the ordinary to give him a clue if a villain was nearby his last encounter was still fresh. He didn't see anything at first but then he noticed the traffic lights, and the monitors inside the stores were flickering on and off. Car alarms themselves suddenly blared to life as the world started to glitch around him. What the Izuku didn't get a chance to react as an explosion almost blinded him. 
When the light died down, Izuku could only stare wide-eyed as the world around him was now completely transformed. He was still in the city of Mustafa that much was clear but now he could only describe it as being another worldly version of Mustafa. The sky was now blood red an unnatural color from its typical day and night color and the street signs were all glitched and bent into rather unnatural shapes. Even the roads seemed to have gaps and holes in them that showed different parts of the city if he looked close enough. Suddenly the ground rumbled and Izuku saw Gilman tense up. He looked in the direction where Gilman was facing and noticed a shadow appearing on the side of the building of a rather large creature. Izuku almost dismissed it as a small creature with a big shadow until he saw a bit of the creature himself. He felt himself become paralyzed in fear as he saw the creature. It was roughly the size the shark villain he saw earlier but the size wasn't what terrified him. What terrified him was the fact that the creature was a giant blue dinosaur-like creature like Gilman but this creature had two tails and looked just even meaner. It also didn't help that instead of arms this creature had two heads for its hands. One was a skull on its left hand and looked like it belonged to another creature of similar size and the other head looked more serpent-like and was still very much alive with flesh and eyes and was actually moving and looking around. Izuku felt his phone ring but was too scared to move. Deltaman, champion level virus Digimon. A voice echoed from his bag. Izuku, run. Gilman told him he readied himself. Izuku did as he was told and tried to run to a safe place to hide. Deltaman let out an ear-splitting screech from each of its arms as it moved to attack them. Surprisingly, despite his small size, he was easily able to catch and stop one of the head hands before biting down on said hand. The creature then lifted its arms with Gilman still holding to it and began swinging it around frantically. The dinosaur released his grip and landed on top a nearby building with a powerful stomp as he eyed the champion-level Digimon. Pyroblast, Gilman said as he charged and released his fire attack against the creature. Deltaman blocked the shot and swung it tail hitting the building Gilman was standing on. The red dinosaur didn't have time to react as he lost balance and fell. Unfortunately Deltaman was not through with him as it grabbed him before he could fall to the ground with its skull hand. Izuku winced when he heard Gilman roar in pain. Though he did not see it Izuku knew that the sharp teeth in the head must have been piercing his friend. The bigger virus then slammed the small one on the ground leaving a sizable dinosaur-shaped print in it. Words echoed through Izuku as he saw his new friend get beaten down. Gilman's limp body being the only thing in his view useless Deku. He heard Bakugo's voice. I'm sorry Izuku. He heard his mother's. Sorry kid it's just not possible. The doctor said. You can't be a hero without a quirk. All Might finally said. Izuku clenched his fist and just like the slime villain before he sprinted towards the rampaging Digimon. If you work hard, I'm sure you'll be a hero. A quirk doesn't make a hero, a hero makes himself. Deltaman saw the boy coming and tried to attack by launching off its arms at Izuku. The boy's body reacted on instinct and he leapt onto the arm and started to run up, his body barely glowing with a fuzzy green energy. Izuku then leapt from the arm and making a fist he punched Deltaman in the face releasing a wave of green particles and sending the creature staggering back for a few seconds. Whether it was from the actual force of the impact or the surprise of the human hitting him Izuku didn't know. Another blast of fire and Izuku saw Gilman now standing up bruised but still able to fight. You said run, right. Izuku joked. Other way. Gilman grumbled. You say run and he ran. A familiar voice said. Izuku and Gilman turned and saw the old man Izuku had met before standing with a smug look. Looks like someone's already becoming a hero, he said. Even have the supercharged fist. The man commented. Izuku looked at his fist and now noticed the green energy moving through him and his body. Was this because he unlocked his quirk? Deltaman roared as he stood back up. The old man still seemed to remain calm though never once acknowledging the creature. Instead he handed over to Izuku a strange device. It was a black rectangle with various orange highlights on it with red lenses on the side and an entry point of sorts on top. That power is useless if you don't concentrate, why don't you focus it and help your red friend here finish off that guy? The man said. Izuku looked at the device and then Gilman. The red Dino seemingly nodded in approval as if understanding what this all meant. The screen of the device lit up with the words DNA charge required, didn't take long for Izuku to realize that it must mean the energy on his hand. DNA. Charge. Izuku screamed as he rested his hand on the device. The screen flashed white and Izuku felt wind pick up as he saw small trails of energy leave the device and head to Gilman. Gilman roared as he was engulfed in a bright light. The old man actually stepped back and so did Izuku when he noticed the light grow bigger. G-U-I-L-M-O-N-D-I-G-I-V-O-L-V-E-2. Gilman felt his skin get ripped off as he was left to his wireframe skeleton. The skeleton then twisted and pulled as he felt it stretch and enlarge. He forced himself to keep focus as the pain of feeling his skin begin to reattach itself to his body and he felt himself be filled with more power. He blew out steam from his empowered fire out his nostrils as he broke the light aura around him. G-R-O-W-L-M-O-N. Izuku stared in wonder as the once child-sized creature was the same height as Deltaman. He looked down to the device in his hand and found the green energy had all but left his body. Impressive, isn't it? You helped Gilman reach another level of power. The man chuckled. Izuku didn't even respond, happy by what he saw. Gilman no Grauman now matched Deltaman blow for blow. Grauman however was getting fed up with the Gidora knockoff. 
He held onto the right head while the left bit him in the side, raising up his claw with the blade protruding from the side it glowed with a light blue light, before he brought it down and sliced the right head clean off. Deltaman stepped back as the right head fell to the side with its eyes becoming dull and lifeless. The monster tried to flee but Growlman caught its left arm and repeated the same process. Now disarmed, the once rampaging monster tried to get away only for Growlman to stop him by holding its twin tails. Growlman's hazard symbol on its chest glowed as a fire formed in his mouth. He then unleashed the fire on Deltaman who could only scream as the attack caused a pillar of fire to form on impact roasting the remains of the Digimon. When the flames died down Izuku saw the remaining charred body of Deltaman collapse onto the ground before it dissolved into data particles and reformed itself into an egg. The old man applauded as he approached the egg. Congratulations kid, you just won your first battle and before you ask, beating Deltaman didn't kill him. The man said as he held out the egg. When you beat a Digimon they get reconfigured into an egg. They will then hatch and get a chance to start life over with supposedly no memories of their previous one so perhaps he might be a bit friendlier the next you meet him, if you even recognize him that is. The man said, So can we get bread now? Gilman asked, causing Izuku to jump as he didn't expect the dinosaur to change back so soon. Here, the old man said as he pressed a button on the device and a loaf of bread appeared. My name is Marcus Dammon. The man introduced himself, and what you call a cyber sleuth. He explained, Cyber sleuth. Izuku asked, Yeah dot 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 we're heroes in a sense, but we don't deal with real world problems at least most of the time. What we deal with is the problems of other worlds, like this one. The man explained, Wait we're in another world. Izuku said, Yep, that's why no heroes showed up. We're way out of jurisdiction. The man laughed, But don't worry, I'll take you back to the real world. The man said as he pressed a few other keys on the device and a portal opened up. Right this way. He said, This is incredible. Izuku told him, I suppose it is. The man noted, You know Izuku ordinarily I would have to erase your memory now. Marcus informed, What? Izuku asked, It's standard procedure. Most humans aren't supposed to know about the two worlds. Marcus explained, However dot 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 you still want to be a hero right? Of course I do, more than anything. Izuku answered without hesitating. Then what if I told you dot 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 that I can train you to be a hero not just for the real world, but the digital world as well, if you wanted to. Marcus said. He looked at Izuku's expression. The boy had yet to respond but from the tears he saw forming in the boy's eyes and the look of disbelief he could tell what the answer might be. Yes dot 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 yes please. Izuku said as he was practically on his knees bowing to Marcus. Izuku Midoriya, welcome to Hyuti, the man said, and please don't cry so much. Hyuti's Cafe. Izuku arrived at Hyuti's main building the next day. It wasn't as he had expected it to be. While he had assumed that maybe it would be an agency or some sort of training area, Hyuti was an internet cafe. In hindsight, considering that their main focus is digital creatures and cyber crimes, it's not really that surprising but his worldview was limited at the time. Izuku stood in front of the entrance to Hyuti. The doors were a strange butterfly design on them. He found it a little strange given his initial impression of Marcus but looks could be deceiving. He entered the cafe and found it to be a really nice place. The cafe itself seemed to now be waking up, with very customers sitting around enjoying breakfast and just three staff members working. One of the staff members turned their attention to Izuku. She was a girl around his age and looked really familiar. Izuku, she asked. Izuku Midoriya. Um hi um. Shoot he didn't know her name. This was so embarrassing. Seo, she answered. I go to the same middle school as you but I'm in a different class. She narrowed her eyes at him. Would you like me to get you anything? She asked. Um no thanks, I'm just here to see Mr. Damon. Izuku stuttered. I guess that means you've got a Digimon. Seo told him. Izuku visibly paled at her words and she mentally scolded herself for being so careless. Relax I've got one as well. She told him as she led him to the back of the cafe. Izuku followed the girl to a door marked employees only. She took out a device that was similar to the one Marcus had lent him yesterday and scanned the door. After the scan was complete she opened the door to reveal a small office. The duo walked in and Seo locked the door behind them. Looking around there wasn't much, a computer, a couch and a desk and chair. Take a seat. I'll notify him you're here. Seo told him as she walked to the computer and typed a few instructions. Since you work with Marcus with the Digimon, do you have a partner as well? Izuku asked. She sure does. A sweet cheery voice said. A light erupted from Seo's pocket as Digimon emerged. Unlike Gilman and Deltaman who were dinosaurs, Seo's partner was rather short Digimon practically the size of a toddler. The closest thing he could describe it as was humanoid baby rabbit girl. She had moon motif to her with a crescent moon adorning her chest. Lunaman, water data rookie. His phone spoke. Gilman emerged shortly after and inspected Lunaman. The dinosaur seemed to be on high alert as he had reverted to his instincts. He sniffed Lunaman in a similar man to dog. Izuku was worried that maybe Seo or Lunaman would be offended but neither seemed bothered by Gilman in the slightest. She's friendly. Gilman said, smells like bread though. He noted, thanks, I help bake in the cafe sometimes. The smaller Digimon said, well I'm glad to see you all getting along. Marcus spoke. Izuku looked around for the old man but couldn't find him anywhere. Seo however wasn't bothered by the disembodied voice and instead smiled at Izuku's naivety. A portal opened in the middle of the room and Marcus stepped out. Sorry I'm late. 
He apologized as he walked over to his desk and took a seat. Seo took the Digimon with her outside for some bread to give the duo some privacy while they discussed business. So I've mentioned that by joining Hudi you'll be a hero to the digital world. Marcus recalled, I suppose I should have elaborated more on what that might mean. Marcus mused, Is a hero for the digital world the same as a hero in our world? Izuku asked, Some of it is but others' aspects are less clean-cut. Marcus explained, To start with Hudi's prime focus is dealing with the Digimon that live in the world between. Is it the world where Deltaman was? Izuku asked. Yes. You see that world is like the middle point between the human and digital world. Digimon that live there either arrive there by traveling from the digital world like your Gilman there or maybe they were born from the data released from our world's computer systems. Marcus explained. Not all Digimon are bad. Some just want to live in peace others dot 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 not so much. It doesn't help that some Digimon are more instinctual in nature. So plain and simple your job is to help maintain the peace like the heroes here. The main difference though is that you don't need any formal training like heroes. Don't get me wrong I will still train you, but you don't need anything like a license or a quirk to be a hero here. Marcus told him, Really? Izuku said in disbelief. Yeah, so if you stay with us you can actually chose to follow other careers instead of just focusing on being a hero. Marcus explained, As far we're concerned if you got the drive to help others, courage and common sense then we want you on our team. Marcus added, But enough talk. Marcus opened the drawer to his desk and took out two items. The first was dark green long coat, it was neatly folded with Hudi's butterfly logo and name visible. The second item was a device similar to the one Marcus lent him yesterday. Hudi's standard uniform. Wear it however you like or if you don't want to wear it tell us and we'll make a custom outfit for you with the logo attached. Marcus gestured. Wear it with pride. You're one of us now. Marcus cheered. Izuku tried his best not cry as he took the jacket. He unfolded the coat and tried it on, it was a little big but he felt comfortable. Thank you, Izuku said. And now for the next item. The coat symbolizes Hudi but a champion of the digital world gets this, the Digivus. Marcus said as he handed the device to Izuku. The Digivus glowed as he held it and the Dinevis's color turned a dark green with dark red buttons. Nothing much to say about this other than do your best. Marcus said, I won't let you down. Izuku answered, I know you won't kid. Marcus answered. Izuku left the office feeling a renewed sense of purpose and vigor. He found Seo and the Digimon sitting by a table. The girl had already changed into her uniform and was sitting with the Digimon eating breakfast. When she saw Izuku walking with the coat on, a small smile formed on her lips. Looks nice, although you might need to bulk up. Seo teased. I might be able to help you with that though. She explained. Well I, I suppose it wouldn't hurt. I needed to start preparing anyway, UA. As entrance exams are in 10 months anyway. Izuku stammered. You're planning to go to UA? Seo asked. Yeah. It's got the best hero course in the country but it's also one of the top schools in general. Izuku explained. He felt kind of relieved he wasn't stuttering or making a fool out of himself in front of Seo at least not much anyway. Okay, guess I'm going to UA. As well, Seo said as she lay back in her chair. I was wondering what schools would have been good, was supposed to research it but never got around to it but if you say UA is the best then I'll give it a shot. She explained. You're going to have work hard. Maybe train up your quirk as well as study for it. Not that I'm implying you look like you don't study. It's just that UA has a very low acceptance rate and stuff. Izuku said, well I'm quirkless so that does save time. She explained to Izuku, earning a surprised look from him. She ignored that and went on about her plan. Apart from doing extra studying her main idea of training was to take up a lot more case for Hyuri as well as training regime with her Digimon. Izuku took notes and decided he'd try and follow her lead. He didn't know much about Hyuri's routine but figured it might be good to get her to help him. They duo soon left the cafe with Gilman and Lunaman being sucked into their respective partner's Digivus. Izuku had folded the coat and stored it away in his bag. The journey to school was not as easy they hoped however as another villain attack had happened and stopped traffic. Damn, can't ever go anywhere without something blowing up in this town. Seo muttered. Well looks like we can use this as a teaching experience. The girl told him as she grabbed him and dragged him into a nearby alley. Oh what are you talking about? Izuku asked while Seo made sure the coast was clear. She took out her Digivus and pressed a button. She scanned a nearby back door in the alley and turned the handle. Come on. She told him and he followed her through the door. Upon entering she immediately pressed another button and walked back through the door motioning for Izuku to follow. When he followed her he noticed how the world had changed. They were no longer in Mustafa's real world but rather the digital counterpart. Lesson 1. You can use your Digivus to open portals to the digital world. These can be in thin air or you can be smart and make them by doors as to not draw suspicion to yourself. I recommend the latter. She explained as they walked back out the alley. Izuku stared as he was surrounded by various Digimon of shape and size. He was used to seeing people with mutation quirks having bizarre appearances but the digital world was something else. He saw just about everything from dinosaurs, to plants, to clock gears, to a snowman. The world itself was seemed more serene than his last visit. No random glitching like last time nor was there any blood red sky instead there was a peaceful green one with various rock formations floating around. He saw trails of light moving across the sky like roads in the air as various Digimon traveled above him. 
Come when we gonna be late if we don't move on, Seo told him uninterested by the sight. As they walked a train horn sounded earning both of their attention Izuku looked up as a train flew through the air. Hey Lokaman, Seo called. Can we get a lift? The train, Lokaman descended till it was just a little way into the air. Seo took this as a sign that it said yes and then took short dash to build up speed before jumping onto the train, several feet higher than he thought possible. She motioned for Iyuku to do same. Izuku stepped back and attempted to imitate Seo. His results were less than stellar. He didn't reach the same altitude as Seo and it looked like he was gonna plummet face first into a nearby building. Luckily Lokaman immediately dropped and shifted position to catch him. Watch it kid, you don't want to damage yourself in front of pretty lady. A deep voice chuckled. Ah oh, you're too sweet Lokaman. Seo answered. She introduced Izuku to Lokaman, one of the various trained Digimon that roamed the digital world. He could help take you anywhere you needed to go whether it is to school or to another continent. Lokaman for the most was an alright guy if a bit of a charmer. The ride to school was amazing though. He practically moved more like a roller coaster than an actual train lopping and spinning around as he rode. It was probably the most fun he ever had on the way to school. When they arrived to school Izuku was still a little disoriented but Seo was there to help him. They made their way into the digital version of the school. Much to Izuku's surprise there were a lot of small Digimon running about the school compound. I didn't think there were Digimon at school. Izuku muttered. You live in a world populated with superhumans and digital technology is it really surprising that there are little monsters everywhere? Seo said as the duo arrived at a door to a supply closet. Seo scanned the door and opened it. The duo found themselves inside at the closet before exiting it and returning back to the real world. Okay so nobody saw that. Seo remarked. It's gonna be real hard to explain why the two of us came out of a closet together. Luckily people will never guess the right answer. Seo smirked at Izuku. Wait won't they dot 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 oh god. Izuku blushed as he realized what Seo meant. It's gonna be our alibi. Seo told him. We can't say anything about our partners or jobs so we'll go with that. Of course we'll have to explain to your mother because while I'm fine with classmates and teachers making assumptions but your own mother should be aware. Seo told him. But you don't mind. You know if people spread rumors. Izuku said. Not unless you have a problem with it. As it stands I don't care what these people think. Seo told him. Well it's not like I have much of a reputation to begin with. Izuku deadpanned. We'll work on your self-esteem later, Seo said as they parted ways. The rest of the school day went by uneventfully. Seo met up with me later, I was surprised I thought that maybe she would have her own group of friends and when I asked her about it she immediately dodged the question. Word spread around the school about Kachin being involved in a villain attack yesterday, the slime villain. I felt my stomach drop because it meant that I had unintentionally released him during my struggle with All Might. It was my fault Kachin was attacked. I was gonna go apologize but Seo stopped me. She knew about the villain and assured me it wasn't my fault. She also made it very clear to be quiet about it because she felt Kachin wouldn't react nicely. And I already had enough to deal with in this school. I apologized to him about later down in life though. When class finished Seo was already waiting for me by the door. We waited for everyone to leave before we entered the digital space. Seo taught me how to open the portal this time and we entered the cyber world. Gilman and Lunaman were already waiting for us. Alright babies, we have to go now. Gilman told the baby Digimon that were with him. Lunaman informed the duo that the dinosaur had become quite playmate to do little ones. The teacher Digimon, Tojman, a giant cactus with boxing gloves was very thankful for the extra help. Once the duo left the school, Seo messaged Lokaman to take them home. The ride back was just as hectic and fun as it was this morning. So I know we didn't do much but what did you think of it? Seo asked. Think about what? Everything. What did you think about Huey? About the digital world? About the Digimon? Seo asked. About me? I don't really know. Izuku said as he took out his long coat. All my life I felt like I had to work hard to fit in a world where I clearly don't and then all of a sudden I'm dragged to be a hero in another world. Izuku mused. Yeah, I can relate to that. Seo said. I take it your first introduction to the digital world wasn't good. Izuku said. Quite the opposite actually. I was born in the digital world. Seo laughed. Wait you were. But I thought. Only Digimon live there. A lot of people accidentally stumbled into digital world centuries ago. Kids, adults and everything in between. Some were fortunate to return home, others not so much, some didn't want to. Those that stayed made lives for themselves and their own civilization grew. Seo explained. How long have you been in the real world? Izuku asked. I came at the start of the school term. For as advanced your society is with all the quirks and superpowers, you guys have terrible network security. Seriously I once downloaded the security footage from my island's testing facility to get a laugh whenever something blew up in their face. Spoiler alert stuff blows up a lot, at least with Melissa it does. Seo chuckled. Wow that's not scary at all. Remind me never to make you angry. Izuku said. Suddenly something clicked in his mind. Does this mean he was her first friend in the real world? He'd have to ask her another day. For now they'd just enjoy the road home. Training with Marcus for lack of better words was hell made real. The first part of his training regime was simple task, try to land a hit on him. Unfortunately for Izuku Marcus was faster and stronger than he was, so that fight went as well as one would expect. 
he was thrown straight across the area with relative ease. Izuku was later allowed to have Gilman help him and the result went practically the same, the only difference being Marcus sent him flying into Gilman. Seo and Lunaman joined the fight later but that made little no difference as everyone got sent flying straight into Gilman. Izuku learnt two lessons that day Marcus was not a frail old man by any stretch of imagination and a Digimon can be knocked down a level if they take sufficient damage which is why Gilman and Lunaman had to be removed from the training area. They were now reverted into baby forms, Jijimon and Moonman. Eventually Marcus got bored with the near-constant abuse he dished out and he decided to move them onto the more sane methods of training. Izuku met a few other Digimon that day, which helped them with their training. The Digimon Tojman, the teacher at the school was a very capable boxer and alongside Marcus taught him the basics in hand-to-hand -hand combat, mainly how to throw a few punches but mainly how to block, dodge and redirect an attack. She also helped me learn a few other things such as taking a baby Digimon if he ever met them in the field during work. It was also during this time that Marcus thought me the truth about Diggy Soul or DNA Charge. It wasn't a quirk like he was led to believe but was actually something more ancient. He spoke about many humans before the emergence of quirks were able to use it to help themselves and others. Izuku wanted to know more but he told me not to worry about how when the time was right he would be taught more. Izuku asked Seo but it turns out much like how people had grown with quirks being such a common thing in the real world despite our lack of understanding for them. So too was Digisol, only those who truly trained hard and dedicated themselves were able to comprehend it. Izuku decided he would need to look into that later. For now he would just work at Huti and train for UA. Like he mentioned earlier, training with Marcus was living hell. At the start he had Izuku do 100 push-up, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats and 2 kilometers run every day. Most of training occurred in the digital world as it was supposedly the best place to train without worry. Each month they ended up adding more reps to the regime and every two months the sprint distance increased. Izuku was impressed that by the end of it, he could do the full regime with ease with 1,000 reps for each exercise and a 10 kilometers run. That regime combined with the combat training he received from Marcus allowed Hima to actually catch up to Seo pretty easily in terms of my physical strength. It might have also helped that Seo while she did exercise was not as religious about it as he was. Marcus had made her double down on her studies since he was confident enough of her physical abilities but not her knowledge on our world. Safe to as Izuku was spending a lot of time with Seo now. She would help him learn more about Digimon and the digital world and he would help her learn about the real world and quirks. The look on his mom's face when he brought home Seo a day to study was ranked upon his most embarrassing which was saying something. He also learned a lot while working with Hyuti. Turns out Izuku was wrong, Hyuti did in fact operate like a hero agency at least from what he studied in school it did. Seo and Izuku would be tasked with patrolling the digital world from time to time and spot and break up any small fights or stop any small time crimes. They were often told to try and sort things out in a civilized manner. If they were able to do so, they should corner the bad guy and try to reason with him for whatever crimes he committed. If reason failed, then go to plan B, beat them into submission. Marcus always made it clear that fighting should end in knockout as long as the Digimon acted with more sentient behavior rather than instinctual. If they were wild then we were to reconfigure them for lack of better words instead of killing them. He was initially against at first but several Digimon and even Marcus themselves reassured me what he was doing was alright. It took him to a place called the Village of Beginnings. It was the birthplace of most Digimon and from what Izuku gathered killing a Digimon usually turned them into an egg which would be brought there to start a life anew. It was there that Izuku was treated to a surprise. Izuku stared at the small little blue puff ball, the creature's red eyes staring back at him. Izuku flashed Seo a look but she just shrugged her shoulders she had no idea what to do either. Hillman was simply watching from afar his eyes focused on the puff ball, narrowing into slits. Um hello. Izuku said quietly, trying not to startle the creature. Um hi. The creature responded. Marcus said you wanted to talk to me. Izuku spoke. Yes, I would like to thank you. The creature explained. Thank me. Thank me what? Izuku asked. I would like to thank you for purifying my data. A Digimon said. Purify. I never purified any data. Izuku pondered as he tried to recall if he had ever done such a task. I may not look like it now, but the last time we met I had three heads and was way bigger than I am now. The Digimon explained. It took Izuku a few moments to connect the dots. Deltaman. He asked in surprised. Actually it's Pegumon now, but you're not wrong, I was Deltaman in my past life. Pegumon explained. I was training for months on end to get stronger and I lost myself during the process and evolved into Deltaman. Once evolved I lost whatever shred of sanity I had left as my mind became muddled with bloodlust. I would have probably spent the rest of my days as mindless monster had it not been for you so thank you. The Digimon said. Oh well you're welcome I guess. He told the creature. If that's all then I guess I'll be on my way. He told the creature, I want to come with you. Pagumon suddenly blurted out. Izuku stopped and then turned around to face the Digimon. Pagumon's gaze was on the ground as he looked at Izuku's shoes. I want to repay you for saving me by becoming a part of your team. The Digimon explained. Seo who had been watching from aware suddenly became very attentive. Izuku was a bit surprised by this. But I can't already have Gilman for a partner I can't just replace him. Izuku defended. Actually you don't need to replace him. 
You are allowed to have more than one partner, it's just that they will usually be weaker than your main one. Seo interrupted. She then lifted up her Digivus and pressed a button. Lunaman emerged from it but so too did two other Digimon. One was a brown koala bear and the other was white dinosaur-like creature with a black and white fur coat covering the top of his body. I have Lunaman as my main partner, but there is also Black Gabumon and Fascomon. Seo explained, before recalling the two Digimon. So does this mean you'll let me join you? Pagumon asked. Izuku pondered the thought for a second before deciding. Turning to Pagumon he nodded and smiled at the little Digimon. Having realized he was accepted he started jumping up and down in joy. Suddenly a bright light enveloped him. Pagumon digivolved to Black Agumon. The once small blue fluff ball was now black child-sized T-Rex only a few inches shorter than Gilman. Just like that my team grew that day. It didn't take long before Seo and Marcus taught me about befriending and raising Digimon. Black Agumon for the most part was a lot mature than Gilman in a sense but that's nothing exactly saying much. He got along well enough with everybody but he took a special liking to Seo's Black Gabumon. The two became sparing buddies and were more often than not on the reserve whenever we needed them. Eventually the ten months he had training under Hudi were up. He was at UA. Hi. The school where All Might, Endeavor and Best Genus had all studied. This was his first step to becoming a hero like he had always dreamed and as he walked through those gates he could tell that this was the start of his tale. Izuku tripped. Or maybe I could just die. However he never hit the ground instead he floated in midair. He blinked for a few seconds before looking around. Then he noticed a cute girl with brown hair standing right next to him. He quickly righted himself. Sorry about that. I should have asked before I used my quirk on you but I didn't want you to fall. That would have been a bad start to the day wouldn't you agree? Yeah I suppose it would have been. Thank you. Well I guess I'll see you inside then. She said as she walked in. I suddenly felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around to see Seo standing there with a smug look on her face. She shifted her eyes motioning for the girl who had just walked by. Wow. Not even in the school yet and you're already meeting other girls. Do I need to be worried that you'll forget about little old me? Seo teased. I don't think I could even if I tried. I told her as we walked in. Izuku, Seo and Bakugo were all seated among the hundreds of other participants in UA. Paul as present Mike briefed them on the situation. Seo was absent-mindedly playing with her hair bored out of her mind with the hero's talk. She had already read the pamphlet as well as hacked the school computer for the program schedule before and had even talked to a few students during the past 10 months to learn all that she needed to enter the school. She had devised a strategy beforehand, seeing as she couldn't use her Digimon and needed every advantage she could get. A virtual map that told her where everything and everyone was would be good and she would hack the school's network after the match started to make it. The whole idea of playing fair at this point didn't really appeal to her at least not for situations like this. Heroes had to be as efficient as possible when they worked alone. There were no civilians to be saved here. Besides there were no such things as rules in real life people were in danger then as hero they should do whatever they can by any means necessary. If she wanted to best them she would need every advantage she got. She would have done so in the real world when she worked a case. She would do it here in mock exams. Izuku meanwhile was still listening very intently to present Mike geeking out about every second. It's still crazy I can't believe every teacher here is a hero. Izuku murmured slightly. Seo let him have his moment she still didn't understand the hero worship Izuku had but if it kept him in a good she'd let it fly. If he lost his cool now then his digisoul would fluctuate and Seo was not about to let her partner fail because his emotions got screwed around. Eventually present Mike explained the details about the robots diving into the villain point system. He had only explained the third robot when a student raised his hand. The sound hero entertained the student allowing him to voice his question. Saying for the most part wondered if he was slow on the uptake. He inquired about the missing fourth robot from the pamphlet going on about stuff like it being shameful to UA. For having inaccurate material and how they as exemplary students deserve better. She was fine with letting the teacher explain it to him but then he decided to call out Izuku for his mumbling. You with the unkempt hair. You've been muttering the whole time if you can't take this seriously then leave. You're distracting the rest of us. A guy told Izuku. Inside the Digivus Lunaman, Bigabumon and Fascomon all looked up. They felt the surge in anger in Seo's emotions and also heard Gilman and Biagumon growling from Izuku's. I pity that fool. Bigabumon said. How about you just zip it? If you didn't notice the printout itself states the robot is zero points and has no impact in the scoring he was explaining UA. Didn't make a mistake you just got impatient. Furthermore you're a student like the rest of us so you should just keep your mouth shut instead of telling people to leave and go home. Heroes don't crush people's spirits. Seo told of the boy. Present Mike did best to calm the two and defuse the situation. Several students who laughed quietly to themselves at the display but choose to otherwise keep quiet. Eventually they were all dismissed and were told to head off to their respective testing facilities. Before going though Seo met Izuku. Remember Izuku. Just keep calm and focus. You've got a lot more power than you realize. Seo told him. While that was not cheesy or cliche or at all. The argument said, While well, smart guy you've got anything better to say. Lunaman defended her partner. As a matter of fact I do. The argument said, Robots are all fair game. Go buck wild and destroy those overgrown tin cans like you would destroy your mom's katsudan. The black dino said, Seo and the rest would give him credit where credit was due that actually motivated them as well. 
And remember you're both still a heroes to everybody we know even if these people might be too dumb to see that. Lunaman added not wanting to be the partner left out. It's fighting time, Gilman said copying Marcus's trademark phrase. The two tamers pumped both their fists into the air before heading to the facilities. Izuku changed into his Hyuta uniform. He wore his dark green coat proudly with a pair of goggles and his digivus hanging around his neck. Seo had actually gotten him the goggles for him as a birthday present to help him whenever he worked with her on some cases. They were specially made to help him do tasks such as manage lists or track numbers and had various features in them like night vision and zoom. Looking around he saw he wasn't the only one with gear as other students also had support items for their quirks. Despite the constant reassurance of Seo and the Digimon, Izuku still felt nervous having to compete with all these other kids who had quirks. He wondered why didn't seem as worried as he was maybe they were just that confident in their abilities he reasoned. He notices the nice girl he had met tried to make it over there to speak but was stopped by a hand on his shoulder. Lo and behold it was the same kid who had called him out in the lecture room. She looks like she's trying to focus. What were you planning on doing? Distracting her. The kid scorned him. You mean like you're doing to me? Izuku voice retorted only it wasn't Izuku who spoke but rather Biagumin disguising his voice as Izuku. The lizard had enough of that kid talking down to his partner and was almost tempted to turn into Deltaman and eat the little nerd but he refrained for several reasons mainly because he didn't want to get Izuku or himself in trouble. Izuku let the Digimon's comments slide as he tried to walk away. He overheard some people talking about him. They were making comments about he nearly fell this morning or how the kid chewed him out. Some of them even made sly remarks about how he needed Seo to bail him out earlier and was now feeling confident because his girlfriend backed him up. They were halfway right in a sense Seo did help him but she wasn't his girlfriend and he would show them just how much of a hero he was. He heard present Mike signal the start and immediately darted off. As he was running he heard the hero tell whoever was still standing that there were no countdowns and real fights. Information his Digimon training had practically beaten into him. He was already ahead but the closing footsteps of the participants was already becoming loud. Putting on his goggles, Izuku saw his pointer counter come up. A robot immediately tried to jump him by breaking through a wall in front. Izuku didn't falter however and when the robot turned to face him the boy sent a DNA-charged haymaker into the robot smashing it into pieces with a single punch his point counter raising his score accordingly. Yeehaw! Gilman cheered. Izuku tapped the side of the goggles and he saw a menu open up, hacking skills. They were abilities that were developed specifically for people like him and Seo. They allowed certain Digimon to aid their tamer with some basic buffs. Seo had access to two since she had a wider range of Digimon under her service but Izuku had only virus types. Thankfully the one hacking skill Izuku did have was exactly the one he needed, acceleration. Activating the skills he heard Gilman and Biagumon roar in approval as he felt their power feed back into him. The boost was in no way significant but he was definitely faster now. Using his new speed Izuku was able to widen the distance between him and his competitors allowing for him to find robots further away without much worry for people jumping his targets. Meanwhile in the other facility, Seo much like Izuku had been going through the exam with ease. She had been able to keep track of all the robots and was doing a good job at finding all the lone robots that hid while everyone else fought over the more obvious ones. However unlike Izuku who only tracked his own points, Seo at the very least was tracking everyone else using Lunaman's data hacking skill, analysis to keep track of everyone and herself. She in no way had any intention of actually going into the hero course so she just tried to keep her score at roughly halfway. That being said it was pretty amusing for her to watch her competitors' faces when she made honest suggestions to them to go after robots she knew were hiding around the area. Some doubted her sincerity but she didn't let that stop her. Besides she knew that as far as most of them were concerned they only needed villain points. Advising them would net her hero points as well so she didn't need to hunt as much of them as the others. Looking over at one of the students she saw a kid with messy purple hair trying to take down a robot with a piece of scrap metal. A lot of students seemed to not be in the area or not care about the kids and the robots he was trying to face but the robots were not making it easy for him to score. She did a quick search of the kid. His name was Hitoshi Shinso and his quirk was brainwash. This got Seo curious as it meant that Shinso's power didn't work on the robot. Deciding to help the kid out, Seo hacked the robots remotely and reprogrammed them to be less erratic. This made it a lot easier for Shinso to strike them down. Shinso eventually noticed Seo and he stared at her with wide eyes. The tamer noticed this and turned around quickly to meet a three-pointer. Seo barely had time to react, jumping out of the way of a stray robot. Shinso jumped to her aid and did a leaping strike with his piece of scrap metal damaging the robot. Seo then jumped kicked robot with a DNA-charged kick breaking its skull opened. She turned to Shinso and gave him thumbs up and smiled. Thanks, she told him, really save my apples back there. She told him, it's what heroes do. The boy replied. Their conversation was cut short however when the ground began to erupt. Seo put back her googles and a warning came up. The zero pointers had been released. Shinso and Seo looked up to see the large behemoth of a machine emerge, a look of shock appearing on their faces. Yeah they were screwed. Seo didn't have her Digimon to help her and that robot didn't have brain to wash, she would have to hack it. Let's move, Shinso said. But, Seo tried to protest only to feel her whole body freeze before it started moving on its own following Shinso. 
with Izuku. Izuku watched as his fellow students fled the scene. The robot was huge, probably bigger than Growlman and Deltaman, but it was slower and surprisingly less intimidating than the dinosaurs he used before. He was getting ready to bolt when he heard a familiar voice cry out for help. Izuku turned around to see Achako stuck under some rubble. His eyes widened when he realized the robot was moving towards her. The more reasonable side told him she would be the fine that the school wouldn't allow to get hurt. The more emotional side told his reasonable side to screw it and Izuku bolted towards Achako. His entire body was now DNA charged as his hero instincts took over. Acceleration pushed his speed to nearly three times his normal speed and he made it over to Achako and easily lifted and tossed the rubble to the side. He picked her up bridal style and then began move away. The robot however wasn't letting up as it slammed its hand in the ground kicking up dust. Hold on. He told the nice girl as the adrenaline fueled back into him causing his digisol to burn even brighter. Come on Gilman lend me your power he mentally called to his partner. Izuku jumped on the robot's hand began to run up the robot's arm. The robot lifted its arm up as if to shake Izuku off but he was already ahead of it. He jumped off at the last second and landed on top of a nearby building. Running quickly he was able to put himself two buildings away on the other side of the area. The robot would have to break through those two buildings but Izuku and the girl were already gone. Eventually present Mike announced that time was up and Izuku fell to his knees with the nice girl being let off. Izuku was finally able to catch his breath as the nice girl sat beside him her ankle still damaged from earlier. As the two waited another hero appeared in the arena, recovery girl, the school's nurse. She treated the students who would have been injured by during the exam, giving out candy to some of them. The heroines explained how everyone did well in her eyes and were all heroes much like a doting grandmother would praise her grandchildren. She eventually made it to Izuku and the girl. A quick kiss on the girl's forward and the girl's leg was healed. She turned to Izuku and did the same even though it wasn't needed healing him of whatever fatigue he had caused by overusing his digisol. She even gave him a lollipop as opposed to gum as she gave everyone else. Well I hope you all pass. She told them before she took note of the jacket Izuku was wearing and cast him a suspicious glance. Fyuta, she asked. That's interesting. She told him as she left. Izuku and the girl, Hachako, met up after the exam outside UA. They met up with a pair of purple-haired students shortly after. Izuku introduced Seo to Achako and Seo did the same with Shinso. How do you do? Izuku asked his partner. Seo merely raised an arm to stop him. Izuku what did I tell you about me in tests? Seo grumbled. Don't ever ask you about them after you write them. Izuku recited. Exactly. It's done. We've already written it now it's time to go to work. Seo said as they started walking. But I thought Marcus gave us a day off today. Izuku asked. He did. I just didn't take it today. Seo explained. She then stopped in her tracks and turned to face Shinso and Ochako. Hey why don't you guys come with us? She told them surprising the two. Um are you allowed to do that? Shinso asked. I'm a waitress at a cafe. You guys can just hang out while we talk. Seo explained. Um well I don't have any money. I really don't want to intrude. Ochako answered. Izuku and I get employee discounts. I'm sure that'll cover having extra people. Seo countered. Well if the two of you are paying, then count me in. Shinso said. What about you Ochako? Izuku asked. Well I guess it wouldn't hurt. She answered. The three students messaged their parents to tell them they would be running late while Seo messaged Marcus in advance about her bring friends over. Once all of them got the green light they were off to Hudis. So did you get your letter yet from UA? Izuku asked as he walked through the park with Seo. Gilman was walking in front of them with Lunaman on his back, sniffing the ground and trying to track a scent. It was the usual way they dealt with cases that required them to hunt down items or people. Gilman was the best tracker they had although Big Abuman could substitute as well if necessary. Nope, I've been busy working cases, Say told him. Don't you think you're working yourself? Izuku asked. Really dot 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 you of all people are gonna to me about overworking myself. Seo said in disbelief. Aren't you the same person who passed out a few months ago because you decided tripling the amount of reps and working without rest would speed up the process? Seo remarked. I know, Marcus was shocked too when he told me to talk sense into you since it's always the other way around. Izuku laughed. In truth it had been a role reversal of sorts. When Izuku bad now joined Hudi he had tried to overwork himself to get in shape as fast as possible. It didn't work of course, he ended up almost collapsing a few times in those early days and thankfully his partners had been around to catch him and snap at him whenever he fell. Now the only person overworking themselves was Seo which was strange because she often did less between the two of them. Currently the duo were looking for an iron pillow that had been stolen from Tojman's Digimon school. It belonged to one of the babies there and was a memento for them from one of their old friends who had been reconfigured. The friend didn't remember them though in the next life so the pillow was all they had left. Marcus would have been fine assigning this to only one person but given how much Seo was pushing herself recently, he decided to make it co-opus. Gilman has followed the scent all the way out of the park and into a nearby alley. There wasn't anything around the area when the human duo looked but the reptile didn't stop snipping. Eventually he found a manhole cover and both the humans realized what that meant. Gilman and Izuku lifted off the cover before the dino jumped and followed by Seo and Lunaman. Izuku being the last to go, covering the sewer. Hey Izuku dot 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 do clowns really live in the sewers in the real world? Seo asked. 
Izuku glanced at his partner. Um no dot 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 why would you say that? The broccoli head boy asked her. They told stories back home about the real world. Some of them were about stuff like superheroes and stuff but others were a bit different. One of them was the story about the clown that lived in the sewers who feasted on fears. I think his name was Penny Pies or something. Nope I've never heard of in Penny Pies, Izuku said. We can probably look into it after the case though. They wander further into the sewer before Gilman stopped in his tracks. The Dino looked up and started sniffing again moving from one place to another, circling around Izuku and Sao. Hey Gilman what's wrong? Izuku asked his partner. The scent dot 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 it's everywhere I can't track it. Gilman whimpered. Don't worry Gilman, we'll still find that punk. We'll just need to look a little bit harder. Lunaman reassured. Yeah. Gilman cheered. It looks like it might be better if we split up and search the sewers. Seo suggested. We'll cover more ground that way and I really don't want to stay here longer than I have to. Seo grumbled. Same. Hizuku said as he held up his digivus. Black Agumon emerged from it, while Gabumon and Fascomon emerged from Seo's. The black Dino landed, splashing water on top of them the rest of them. Hey oops, he said when he noticed the expression on the humans' faces. Seo trudged down the sewer with Lunaman in her arms and Fascomon holding onto her back. Black Gabumon however was walking to her side. Seo whistled an old tune as she walked, the Digimon feeling very relaxed by it. You ready to make some new friends? Lunaman asked her as she snuggled up in her partner's arms. Marcus is really hoping that make more human friends eventually. The Digimon commented. You can't just hang around Izuku so much. I don't need to make any other friends. I got you guys. Seo retorted. That's flattering but you can't live in the human world and only interact with two humans. Lunaman added. What happened to all that excitement about coming here? She questioned. Hi. It wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. Okay. Seo admitted to her partner. I always thought the human world was so cool and fun and it is but dot 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 it's so weird. I just don't feel like I belong. Seo admitted to her partner. I'm mostly clueless on even the slightest things and the stories that we were told don't exactly match up. You saw how Izuku reacted when I talked about the clown in the sewers. He had no idea what I was talking about. She confessed. Overworking yourself isn't going to help. Lunaman countered. I know but it helps me relax. Seo admitted. Right because crawling through the sewers is very relaxing. The Digimon deadpanned. If she's so worried about making friends why don't you ask Shinso or Achako about helping you make some, Chu. Fascomon suggested. They're pretty nice. He added as they continued to walk. Black Gabumon suddenly stopped and turned around narrowing his eyes back at the tunnel. He felt like he had heard movement behind them. What's up BG? Fascomon asked but the beast Digimon merely shrugged and continued walking forward. Yeah, I don't like the smell too, Fascomon said. All the while a pair of eyes were watching them from within the sludge on the ground. So what exactly does a hero course teach and why dies UA? Seem to have the best. The Agumon asked. For as long as he had been a part of the team he never really bothered learning the technical stuff like the school system. He was curious as to what made UA. So special that Izuku would want to go there even when Baku Brat was applying to go there as well. Unfortunately for him, Izuku's reasoning boiled down to most high-ranking heroes coming from UA. Why do heroes need to be ranked? Gilman asked. What do you mean? Izuku asked the Red Dino. Well in the digital world there are different Digimon factions. You have Olympians, the Royal Knights, the Legendary Warriors and various other Digimon teams. Despite there being so many teams there are no official ranking system for them. The Agumon explained. Whoever is the strongest will be very subjective as each team has their own strengths and weaknesses against each other. While the hero rankings here usually take into account how many cases a hero resolves alongside their public appeal. Endeavor has the most cases but All Might is still number one because people feel safe around him. Izuku explained. Best Genist is also a rather popular as well making it at number 4. They are all past students of UA. As well, Izuku noted. It is almost a requisite to attend UA. If you want to be a top hero. But is it absolutely necessary? The Agumon asked. Surely there are some heroes who are in the top 10 who didn't attend UA. There is Hawks. He's in the top 10. As a matter of fact he's the youngest person ever to make it. Izuku admitted as they continued walking down the sewer. See, even if you don't make it into UA. You can still be a hero. The Agumon suggested. Not that you won't make it off course. I'm just letting you know there are other options if you're interested. The Digimon admitted. He just doesn't want you going because Bakugo. Gilman explained, causing the Agumon to look away nervously. I know, but in all honesty if I give up just because things are getting rough then I'll just prove I'm not capable enough. Izuku explained. Marcus, Seo, Cutie and my mom have all helped me reach so far. If I don't try my beat then I'll just be letting them down. If I don't try my best and aim for the top then I won't prove myself capable enough to match people like Bakugo or the others. Izuku sighed. I see. The dark Digimon muttered. Well okay then aim for the top but just remember. The same people who support you also care for you so if you can't handle it make sure to tell us. Even heroes have people they need to return to at the end. The argument explained. Noted. Izuku said. Gilman's eyes suddenly narrowed into slits as he turned around and growled. Izuku and Biagumon looked at him worriedly as he stared right at them. 
The Digimon and humans slowly turned around not seeing anything behind them however their noses were assaulted by a rather pungent odor. Before they could react a blob of purple like sludge erupted from the sewer towards them. Not again. Izuku cursed. Seo felt relieved. Her team had finally gotten the iron pillow back from the rogue Digimon. It was a yellow four-legged aquatic creature with orange fur on its back and black horns. The creature had tried sneaking up on them but Big Abumen had easily caught him and slammed into the ground. Lunaman had then proceeded to freeze him against the wall with a weak blast of ice. Using her Digivus, Seo had stored the iron pillow within it and was now about to contact Izuku when Lunaman shrieked. A massive purple sludge arose from the water and roared at them. The Gabumon wasted no time, smashing the ice and grabbing the captured Digimon as the team took off running. Digimon Analyze, Rareman, Champion-level virus type, Seo's Digivus informed as they ran down the sewer system. Seo took her Digivus out, trying to contact Izuku, but to no avail. Eventually the group found themselves in a big open space within the sewer. Seo stopped as they looked behind them to see if the Digimon was still following them. Everyone tensed as they heard footsteps approaching behind them. Bigabumon almost fired an attack but thankfully he held it at the last minute. Izuku came running out of the other side with Biagumon behind him. Izuku, where's Gilman? Seo asked. However her question was soon answered when another rareman came from the tunnel behind them with Gilman stuck in its chest. To make matters worse the Digimon that chased her as well had now arrived behind her effectively corralling both humans and their Digimon. I tried punching it early, but my arm almost got stuck. Izuku warned her. Gilman struggled in his captor's grasp holding the Digimon and s when Seo got an idea. She turned to her partner. Lunaman, freeze the rareman that's holding Gilman. She instructed. Her partner complied and launched the attack hitting the rareman and Gilman square in the chest, causing some ice to form around the red Dino. Izuku realized the opportunity he had now. The Digimon was now a little more solid. Izuku rocketed for his partner with black Agumon in tow while Seo and her set turned for their own opponent. Lunaman repeated the attack, freezing the champion in place with the sewer water and its own slimy body. Seo, like her partner, rushed for the champion Digimon. Scar Nail. The creature roared as it tried to strike the girl. Black Gabumon caught the creature's attack taking damage while Seo jumped and struck it on the creature's ice-covered chest. A wave of purple energy was released from the impact as the ice broke and the creature staggered back. Lunaman, it's boss fight time. Seo commented. DNA. Charge, Seo yelled as she placed her hand on the Digivus. The light erupted and engulfed the little lunar Digimon. Lunaman Digivolved too. Lunaman's body started to grow as she evolved into her champion form. She lost a little child appearance instead adopting one that looked more like a melee fighter like Maruko. Her appearance was actually rather close to Maruko's given the fact that both shared some theming with rabbits. The main difference being that Seo's partner kept her entire body a purple tinged white with her face still looking like a bunny's. Her hands or paws were now adorned with a pair of boxing gloves and her face was partially covered with a domino mask. L-E-K-I-S-M-O-N, the new Digimon called. G-R-O-W-L-M-O-N. Izuku's partner roared as he had just finished his own transformation breaking free of the ice and the rareman. The two humans retreated while their now evolved partners squared off against the two rogue Digimon. The difference between them was very distinct. Izuku's partner was more direct and brute force. Rauman traded blows with his opponent as they both tried to defeat each other. Seo's partner however was more hit and run. Lekasman used her small size and speed to avoid being hit while she periodically jumped and struck him in the head. The weaker Digimon that accompanied them were also getting involved. Biagumon shot a fireball at Gilman's opponent ever so often to distract him and give Grauman the opening he needed to attack while Biagumon did the same. Decaying Breath One of the Raremen shot an attack intending to hit Lekasman but the Digimon avoided it. The attack still struck the nearby wall and it slowly began to decay. The Digimons and humans noticed this and realized almost immediately that it was time to end the fight. Lekasman charged an attack and launched it at her opponent, freezing it once more, this time encasing its entire body in ice. Lekasman then took off with a sprint using the frozen Digimon as a platform to leap off. Lekasman jumped high enough that she was able to flip herself and land on the roof before she jumped back down delivering a powerful kick to her opponent. Moon Knight Kick she screamed as she smashed her opponent to pieces. Grauman's arms meanwhile began to glow as the plasma blades on the side were energized. The dragon Digimon used them to burn off the edges of his opponent's arms leaving his opponent with only one option left. The rareman's chest expanded as he built up one last breath attack to finish but it never went through. Biagumon noticed the attack and fired his fireball right as the rareman opened his mouth. The fire ignited the gas almost immediately and the Digimon was set ablaze as the fire burnt it from the inside out. Not wanting the creature to suffer for long, Growlman readied his own attack and cremated the Digimon right there and there. From the fire and the ice the data for both the Digimon were reconfigured into two identical eggs. Izuku and Seo both used their Digivuses to store each egg. They were about to leave when Fascommon coughed, drawing their attention to the Digimon Bigabumon had brought with them. The yellow and orange fur Digimon had now regained consciousness. The two humans tried talking to the Digimon about why he had stolen the iron pillow. Gizemon as he was called was a little stubborn about it but having Growlman give him a talking to made him very repentant. Seo made a suggestion to the cowering Digimon though. 
If he promised not to steal any more and was willing to work a bit, then Seo would get him an iron pillow. The Digimon seemed reluctant at first but Lekasman smashing her fists made him comply readily. The duo arrived at the school after a long trek back through the sewer. They had messaged Tojman in advance and requested for her and the student to meet them outside the school, lest all the students got knocked out by their scent. The student they met was a small little purple and white puff ball. He had a raccoon-like tail and wore a small helmet. He was absolutely ecstatic to have gotten his pillow back. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The puff ball cheered as he took the pillow from them. He balanced it expertly on his head as he headed back to the school. Thank you again, Hyuri. I'll send your reward immediately, Tojman told them, but Izuku stopped her. That won't be necessary, Tojman. Izuku explained. Hyuri doesn't charge the daycare for any jobs. Izuku repeated nervously. Besides, we kind of just made things a little harder for you. He said sheepishly. Yeah, we sort of ran into two rogue Digimon when we went to get the pillow and turned them into eggs. Seo explained. Tojman held her head down as she realized what that meant. She would be getting two more Digimon to take care of soon if the eggs hatched. No wonder they didn't charge her, she would need to get more supplies for the new baby Digimon. Well in that case, I'll just leave you with my thanks, Tojman said as she bid farewell. Seo arrived back in Hyuri and went straight for the shower when re-entered the real world. Her partners followed suit going into her PC where they each had their own virtual rooms to freshen up. After she was done she had changed into her pajamas and was in process of heating some food to eat when her phone buzzed. It was from Shinso. He had received his letter from Yue. Today and he had been accepted. Although it was evident to her he wasn't exactly happy. The boy had landed in class 1 degree Celsius, the general studies course. Seo checked her mail and noticed she had her own letter for Yue. She wanted to sound disappointed as well when she read it, but she was feeling a little thankful as well. She was heading to class 1 degree Celsius as well. Her conversation with Shinso was caught short though as another individual was calling her. It was Izuku. She told Shinso she would talk to him later before she hung up and answered Midoriya's call. The boy was almost screaming her receiver off in stark contrast to Shinso. A two had made it into UA, but he had landed in the hero course. The UA teachers were looking through the roster of students for the new academic year. They found several of them to be quite promising. One in particular having only gotten via villain points. They noted how rather than flee like the others he took advantage during all the smaller targets together before he blasted them to pieces. He had guts, skill and a powerful quirk. One the opposite end of the spectrum was a student without a quirk. He didn't have the same type of power but he scored higher than anybody else. An even split of 38 hero points and 38 villain points putting him just below the other one. An impressive feat especially considering the lack of quirk. Two individuals in particular found this to be pretty interesting. One of them was a skeleton man with blonde hair who recognized the boy. The blonde skeleton frowned a little but not because he didn't like the boy though. He was just reminded of a mistake he made a few months ago. Are you sure it's a good idea to allow him to be a hero? Marcus didn't respond instead leaning back in his chair trying to recover from his most recent fight. He figured he'd have to deal with this sooner or later. He was just hoping it was later. He looked in front of him at the girl who stood before his desk, Cutie's true owner. Erica, I trust Izuku. He'll be fine. When I was his age I was working for Dats and going to school. Marcus defended. You don't have the best academic achievements. Erica deadpanned. If I remember correctly you didn't even finish high school or middle school instead running off to the digital world. The only reason you're even making an income right now is because I made you the manager of Hudi. When you say it like that you make it sound like I did nothing worthwhile with my life. Marcus grumbled. Erica let out a small laugh as did the Digimon and their Digivices. Erica dot 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 that's not very nice Marcus has accomplished quite a lot that's why Shoutman put him in charge of protecting the human world. A high pitched voice said as the Digimon emerged. It was a large green caterpillar. Show some respect for him at least. The Digimon said. However he didn't seem to realize that when he came out of the Digivus he was now sitting on top of Marcus's head. Will you get off of me? Marcus yelled at the Digimon. The Digimon immediately freaked out and jumped from Marcus's head and into Erica's arms, Erica giggling at Marcus all the while. Marcus's own partner managed to talk him down, calming him. Look if it makes you feel any better. I'll talk to Izuku about how he should deal with his school life and his duties as a cyber sleuth. The kids already had enough to deal with in life and I'm not gonna tell him he's got to give up his dream. At best maybe I can discuss with him and say oh about organizing a schedule or something. Okay then dot 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 now for my next question. Have you all been keeping a low profile with the Digimon? She asked. Marcus sighed as he turned to her. Both Gilman and B. Gabumon are very good in terms of tracking rogue Digimon. Gilman in particular has the better nose. If any Digimon makes it into the real world, Izuku and Seo send them back into the space between and then their partners take off the problem. If you're worried about humans seeing them I have that covered as well. Marcus said as he produced a small device from his coat. This old thing was dat standard. Press the little button on top and it causes temporary amnesia where the memories of the person affected by it will forget what happened. I've shown Seo and Izuku how to use it and the device has a built-in log system so I know when they use it. He explained. Very well then, you seem to have everything covered. Erica answered. Where are they right now? She asked. School. It's their first day in UA. 
Izuku stood in front of the large door. Beyond it were students who were more than likely leagues above him, with powerful quirks and a lot of other stuff going for them. However, he wouldn't allow himself to be discouraged. Dot, dot, dot. His mom was so delighted when he had opened his letter and he was told he was accepted as was the members of Hudi and his Digimon. He wouldn't let them down. He had made it, beating out hundreds of other applicants. Do you think Kachin is in this class? Gilman asked his roommate in the Digivus. The Agumon scoffed. He refused to believe someone like Bakugo had made it in UA. But he knew the chances were high that he did. For as loud as the kid was very capable physically and mentally. However, the dynamite for Brain's teen had really gotten on his nerves more than once he was really hoping Izuku and him were in separate classes or he and Gilman might lose it. Izuku seemed to think so as well because he was also muttering about how they both possibly ended up in different classes and that maybe everyone in his new class were all really nice people. Izuku opened the door and entered the classroom dot 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 and he almost got a heart attack when he heard two people speaking very loudly. Biagumon and Gilman glanced up as they heard the familiar voices. Gilman and Biagumon were already growling in the Digivus and their eyes had become slits as their protective instincts for their partner took over. The blonde short fuse and the stiff blue robot boy were both in Izuku's class. Izuku did his best to try and reel in his worries on the situation and his Digimon followed suit especially when they sensed the blue haired boy approaching. Lucky for them all, the blue haired boy was not as antagonistic as he was during the entrance exams. He actually apologized and complimented Izuku especially on how perceptive he was for realizing there was something more to the test. The Digimon knew Izuku had no idea about the hero points. He had outright refused to listen to Seo when she told him about the info she had acquired, especially through her hacking, however Seo's Digimon still shared it with them. Izuku hadn't known about the hero points like Seo did dot 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 he was just being a hero. In a way the Dino duo was relieved the glasses boy wasn't another bully. They had already seen enough of that in Izuku's middle school and the amount of self-control they had to use back then was tempered by a mix of playing with the baby Digimon and talking to Tojman and the digital counterpart to the school. They would explore the UA. Grounds later when Izuku was more comfortable but for now they would stay with him. Another familiar face had gained their attention. Achako was here as well which was a big relief for them. While not having any actual interactions with her, she was at least nice to Izuku and they had seen him interact very pleasantly if not awkwardly with her during the period between the entrance exams and now. She had actually gotten a job at Hyuti and was now working alongside Izuku and Seo however she was not involved in the major part of the business like Izuku and Seo were. Lastly there was Bakugo who for whatever reason had been put in the same class as Izuku. The students were not chosen at random instead being carefully selected in an effort to balance out the two classes. Had it been random then they could have at least tried and scrambled the data to keep Bakugo away from their human. It was still fresh in their mind what had happened. Bakugo had them after threatening to find out how they got in. Izuku didn't respond not yet anyway and he did his best to stop Seo as well. Bakugo wasn't interested in her since she made a general studies but he was interested in Izuku because he landed in the hero course. Izuku and Seo had ruined his chances of being the lone student to attend UA. And Izuku had taken it a step further by the student to land in the hero course as well. The Agumon remembered that day well. Because it was also the day where Izuku finally talked back to Bakugo about how he wouldn't give up and the power the Digimon felt from Izuku's determination was incredible. Hyuti had celebrated that day but Biagumon knew that someone like Bakugo wasn't going to back down after being told off once. He would try again and the Dino duo would be waiting for him. Achako was speaking about being excited to meet the other students but someone interrupted her. Izuku looked over and noticed a man in a yellow sleeping bag. He welcomed them to UA, as hero course, drinking from a nice pouch. The Digimon felt a little put off especially when they sensed minor fear from the three students but they reacted when the man introduced himself as their teacher. Gilman didn't like him, he didn't seem fun. Seo entered class 1 degree Celsius right before the bell rang. She had taken a case this morning to try and calm herself but the job ran a little longer than she anticipated. She wouldn't get to sit in the back of the class away from other students but hopefully she could still get a seat at the end. Looking around she felt somewhat relieved when she saw a messy head of purple hair. It was Shinso and by the looks of it he was also happy to see her as well. Nice so she had a friendly face in class. She wondered if Izuku was just as lucky. The teacher soon arrived and they were immediately sent to orientation. Upon arriving Seo noticed something unusual. One class was missing. Izuku's class. Shinso seemed to notice it as well. Taking out her Digivus, Seo whispered into it. Find Izuku. She told her partners. Got any aces? Gilman asked. Go fish. The Agumon answered. Hey what's up with Izuku's class? Why aren't they in orientation? Lunaman asked as she and the others arrived in Izuku's Digivus. Gilman was the first to look up. Izuku's teacher is a real meanie. He's giving them a test on the first day of class. Gilman grumbled. According to him, UA is no place to socialize and if they want to make it into the big leagues they shouldn't worry about stuff like orientation. The Agumon growled. He says that because UA doesn't follow the traditional academic method he can run the class however he sees fit and right now I'm questioning if he should even be a teacher at all. 
Oh, come on by. It can't be that bad, Faskoman said. Why don't you see for yourself? The Agumen grunted as he gestured to the monitor. True to the Dark Dino's word, the teacher was giving them a speech about how the government was flawed, letting people feel that everyone was equal because they hindered the ones with power. He let Bakugo go first, performing a ball throw with the aid of his quirk. The ball was sent flying like if it had been shot out of a cannon. The teacher then showed the students the readings for the shot. Up until that point the other Digimon had given him a small benefit of the doubt however. It's the most rational way of judging your potential as a pro hero. Their fate in him diminished almost immediately with that statement. Biagumen scoffed at the comment. If power alone was enough to judge a person's potential then Biagumen would have become the great hero while being lost in the insanity of his own power. It wasn't just about power that made a hero, it was also heart. Izuku's own raw determination to save his friend had granted Gilman the power to attain Champion 4, something that had taken Biagumen several months of training to acquire and even when he did, he lost control of himself with no way of reverting back. The Digimon sat back comfortably in the Digivis as they looked on. One of the students mentioned how the exam would be fun and they could see why these kids were finally getting to use their quirks after a life of mostly keeping their powers in check. However, the teacher wasn't having none of that. When he heard they called it fun he decided to add some stakes to the exam. The students had eight physical tests to perform to judge their potential and whoever came in last would have been immediately expelled. That's dot 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 that's the dumbest, stupidest and most foolish thing I have ever heard. The Agumon screamed. He's supposed to be a teacher and he isn't even teaching them anything before expelling them. The Digimon growled, his mouth was starting to steam as fire built up inside. Gilman and Bigabumon realizing what was going to happen quickly moved the cards away as the Digimon launched a powerful fire blast and scorched the floor. The four Digimon all made their way over to the other side of the Digivus while Biagumon worked out his frustration. Lunaman had already started hacking into the school records to look for more info on Aizawa. What she found made her almost smash the data to pieces herself. The man had expelled his entire class the previous year on their first day. She had been open to the idea of it being an idle threat but the evidence proved otherwise. However she did feel slightly relieved though when she noticed something else. All the expelled students were re-enrolled into UA. Almost immediately after the expulsion only they studied under a different homeroom teacher. She showed the info to the others. I see. Much to their surprise it was Big Abumen who had spoken up. The black and white beast walked over and smacked Biagumon on his head before he dragged him back to the group. Failure as a hero is not something easily recovered from. If a hero fails then usually people die, in a sense expulsion is supposed to simulate that for them without traumatizing them so much. He explained to them. You can't be serious. Biagumon growled. Do I look like I have a sense of humor? Biagumon challenged. The black dino and the black, white beast stared each other down. In the end Biagumon relented. This is still a bad idea. The black dino commented. It probably is but we'll just have to deal with it later. He answered. I'll let Seo know. Lunaman suggested, should we tell Izuku as well? She asked. We'll tell him after. Gilman told her. It would ruin the surprise. The students, especially Achako, were quick to voice their disagreement with the exam stakes, but the teacher had an answer. Just like what Big Abumen had guessed, he was explaining that fairness wasn't in a hero's job. Natural disasters and villains didn't play fair and as heroes they needed to make up and overcome those unfair situations. I'm sorry to tell you. That for the next three years, UA will run you through the ringer. That's plus ultra. Use your strength to overcome it all. So bring it. Aizawa told them. His methods are still debatable but now I'm wondering who's worse, him or Marcus. Faskoman wondered. Let's hope we never have to see that. Lunaman laughed nervously. If Marcus heard some of the comments Aizawa made, he would have shown him just how much potential his fist had when it connected with Aizawa's face. The first test was a 50 meters sprint. Izuku had gone to activate the acceleration hacking skill and was rather surprised when he noticed the extra three faces. The Digimon just waved their support for him, Lunaman cheering with pom-poms. He didn't have to talk though so just activated the hacking skill. He felt the effect of it kick in, however it was enhancing him even more than it did in the entrance exam as Seo's Digimon were also contributing to the boost. Hilda went first using his engine quirk. Achaka was after him and she did the test by using her quirk to lighten her clothes and shoes. One kid even used his quirk which was apparently a laser in his belly button. Eventually it was Izuku's turn and as if the universe wanted to mess with him, Bakugo was who he competed against. Izuku focused on the call of the machine he waited for the signal. He could feel the determination of himself and all the Digimon energizing his body. When the gunshot rang to signal them to run, Izuku took off immediately as did Bakugo. Bakugo used his explosion to propel himself forward and cross the line but to his surprise Izuku was already across it, not even breaking a sweat. The machine rated Izuku's time as being 2.5 seconds even faster than Ilda's time. Bakugo's time was 4.13 seconds. What? Bakugo stared in disbelief at Izuku. How the hell did that quirkless nerd move so fast? He yelled. The next few tests Izuku had were not as good as the sprint but he still did good nonetheless. His grip strength was 69 kilograms. 
He did a lot better in the standing long jump making it past a few other students. He was able to do the repeated sidestep better than almost everyone with the exception of Minta, acceleration and all the training he did with Hudi and the Digimon paying off. The ball toss was a little more tricky, he didn't have that much strength to put behind it but what he lacked in strength he made up for in speed. He was able to wind up enough and move his arms fast enough that he was able to send the ball flying. It wasn't as impressive as Achako, she literally scored infinity but it was still more decent than some of his other classmates. Once that was done Izuku had a few more physical tests. He destroyed them in the sit-ups easily making it to over thousand thanks to acceleration and the regime Marcus had put him through for those past 10 months. The toes touch was decent enough though. His long distance running was a lot another outstanding one. All those days he spent running around on fetch cases for Hudi was paying off big time at the end of it. He had managed to pass Ilda once more despite the latter having actual engines in his legs. Shoto Aizawa took note of the quirkless boy. He had first theorized him as being dishonest. Given some of the boy's feats he had thought he was lying and that he had a quirk but was keeping it a secret. So Aizawa used his power to try and erase this secret quirk. Surprisingly enough he found that his power had no actual effect on Izuku. Izuku still reached to superhuman levels of speed while under the effect of the erasure quirk. A small part of the teacher felt impressed that the quirkless kid could have made it so far but the rational part of him told him that something was amiss with this whole situation. Grown adults and pro athletes couldn't make times Izuku said even with all the training they did, so for a kid with no power to manage to reach there, something was fishy. The computer processed all the results from their exams and ranked them accordingly. Izuku had managed to land himself in the top five and the Digimon within his Digivus all jumped for joy. At last place though was Minu Minta. Even with that high score in sidestepping he still got below average in most other exams. Minta, Aizawa told him, pack your things, you're expelled, the teacher said without missing a beat. There was a minor uproar but Aizawa knew how to handle it. Orientation went on forever in Seo's opinion. She had all but fallen asleep several times on Shinso's shoulder much to the boy's dismay but luckily no one seemed to notice or at the very least, he woke her up before any did notice. When they were finished they got their curriculum for the semester so they could see what to expect. Seo had already photographed hers and was starting to devise a schedule for her work with Hudi. Hey what's that outside? One of the students commented. Everyone rushed to the window to see what was going on. Apparently one of the classes was having some sort of event. From the looks of it they were competing in some exercises. Seo immediately recognized the green digital aura of her partner. The thing about the DNA charge was only visible to other users or Digimon. Seo could make out Izuku's DNA charge but no one else would see. So that's where they went. She muttered, but not soft enough. Shinso heard her and immediately asked who she was talking about. She pointed out that the students down there were in fact class one of the class who didn't come to orientation. They wondered why that was the case but luckily for them their homeroom teacher was more than happy to explain it to them. Present Mike was their homeroom teacher and he explained to them about how Aizawa was testing his students on their quirk usage. He assured them that they wouldn't need to undergo any tests as yet and that they should just focus on getting used to UA. Maybe make some friends and get acquainted with their fellow classmates. He was a pretty laid-back guy but that could have just been for the first day. However, he did mention something that many of the students found interesting. I'm sure that there are many of you who want to be heroes. He told them, UA's sports festival is later this semester and it's a pretty big stage if I do say so myself. He explained, if you can prove yourself during the sports festival, whether by winning it or by just beating the hero course students, you will get a chance to rock and roll with the hero students. He informed them, just be aware that it's a very low chance. There were muttered whispers between the students after as a lot of them had originally intended to make it into the hero course only to be placed here. Seo glanced at Shinso and she saw an all too familiar look on his face. It was the same look she saw on Izuku, a hero's determination. Minta was alone in the locker room. He felt awful like his entire world had been crushed. He had worked so hard to make into UA, and when he finally made it he got kicked out on day one. The quirkless kid did better than him for Pete's sake. Now how was he going to prove himself? He would just go back to being a nobody. The people in his old school were right. He was a fool. He was pathetic and that's why no one liked him. Now now, surely a handsome boy like you can't possibly believe those things. A soft and alluring voice said to him. Minda looked up and glanced around looking for the source of the voice. He saw nothing, but then he felt a pair of arms wrap around him as he was pulled into the wall. It is all that teacher's fault, isn't it? The voice whispered. He didn't think you were capable but I do and I'll help you prove to him just how capable you are. You're going to try for the sports festival. It was blunt but true. Seo confronted him about it during lunchtime. Yeah I am. Shinso answered. He didn't have a chance in the entrance exam because he had to fight those stupid robots. At the sports festival he would be competing against other humans and then he could show everybody his true power. The two of them managed to find an empty table to sit down and eat. You know it's going to take more than just your quirk to beat them. Seo informed the brainwasher, what will you do if someone figures out your quirk? She asked him. Shinso seemed genuinely surprised by her statement. Wait don't tell me you were actually considering just using your quirk only. Seo said in surprise. I was considering it but when you put it like that now it doesn't seem like a good idea. Shinso admitted. That's because it's not. She told him. 
If I were you, I would resort to using the quirk only when I'm outclassed. A quirk like that is powerful, but it's pretty easy to counter if your opponent knows the right weakness. She told them, you should work on improving your body, that alone can give you a major advantage. She told him, look at Izuku dot 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 he made it into the hero course. And you're sure it wasn't because of his flashy quirk. Shinso said bitterly, that's not possible. Seo said, Izuku doesn't have a quirk. She told him, Seo would admit the look on his face was priceless when she told him that. She even added in the fact that how she was quirkless as well. Then how did he make it into the hero course? Shinso asked, simply put, he trained. We both did, Seo told him. She left out exactly what some of that training meant entailed but she told them the non-Digimon related stuff. Marcus trained them to fight, give them a regime to get their body in shape and they worked odd jobs at his cafe to get some creative field experiences. Do you think he would teach me as well? Shinso asked. Seo didn't respond right away. While Marcus might not have trained him, if Shinso did on the off chance convince him then what brief training he might have gotten would have helped him at least somewhat. The cyber sleuth told him she'd have to think about it and before back to him later. While eating Seo's Digivus beep signaling the return of her team. The Digimon gave her a basic rundown of what happened via text and she couldn't help but smile a bit when she read about Izuku's victory. However her smile faltered slightly when she noticed the last part of the message. One of the students was expelled due to his poor performance in the exam. Fan faxing tastic, she thought. Izuku most likely would be too exhausted after the exam so it meant she was going to have to handle the cleanup. When school was over Seo waited in front of the entrance with Shinso. She had seen Achako exit the building alongside the blue-haired guy who had insulted Izuku during the entrance exams. Achako made her her way over to Seo and two girls exchanged greetings. The blue-haired boy came too and Seo would have roasted him again had her Digimon not told her he had apologized to Izuku. Where's Izuku? She asked plain and simple. Oh well Mr. Aizawa had to speak with him after class. Achako informed her. Seo felt at least somewhat relieved when she heard Izuku was with Aizawa but that relief was only momentarily. She remembered the type of person her team had described him to be. She also knew the kind of trouble that would be waiting for them. She made an excuse to the group, the old bathroom routine and quickly left. Black Gabumon was already growling in her digivis when she entered the girls' restroom and made a portal into the world between inside one of the stalls. When she arrived in the digital world's equivalent of Izuku's class she was already seeing the problem that had been created. Gilman and Black Agumon were trapped under some webs as they were pinned to the floor and Izuku was nowhere in sight. Several large spider-like Digimon were crawling around the classroom around the Saurians and it looked like some of them would eat the Dinos. She could make out the small form of what she assumed to be Minumita standing among them and behind him a woman in red dress was whispering in his ears as a corrupted purple aura flowed from Mita and into the Digimon around the area. Okay this is way worse than I thought it would be. Black Gabumon muttered. Seo cursed under her breath as she and her partners hid outside the room. She didn't like the situation especially since Izuku's partners were down. While she knew that her team could handle these spiders easily, it was the kid and lady she was worried about. The kid reeked of a corrupted DNA charge, no doubt caused by the negative emotions he felt after being expelled and with that random power flowing around it could easily get out of hand to force one of the spiders into their ultimate forms. So she did the most logically thing at the time. She called Marcus for help, and unfortunately for her it went straight to voicemail and Seo almost broke her phone in rage. Barely containing her annoyance, she left a voice message for her mentor explaining the situation before looked on. She needed a plan. Izuku stood in front of his homeroom teacher. The rest of his class had already been dismissed but the teacher had taken particular interest in him. To make things even better, Gilman had picked up the scent of a rogue Digimon in the digital counterpart of the school and had run off with Biagumon trailing behind to hunt it down leaving the boy on his own. Racerhead was currently going through the test results from their apprehension test and Izuku had a sneaky suspicion he could guess what this was about. Am I here because I have no quirk? He asked. It was better to get straight to the point than beat around the bush. He already heard it all before. He had no quirk so he was not as evolved as the rest of the quirk society he lived in. He had no quirk so he was fragile or less efficient when compared to everyone else. He had no quirk but he worked a job where he technically had to sucker punch all sorts of monsters every other day of the week. If the teacher was going to tell him off or try to scare him about his lack of quirk then he would rather they to the point. I take it you've already heard it all before. Aizawa said. I've wanted to be a hero ever for as long I can remember. Izuku told the teacher. When I was four, the doctor told me that I was quirkless and that I wouldn't have won. I got bullied a lot for it after, but I didn't let that stop me. You are aware of dangerous being a hero can be. Aizawa started. Even for people who have quirks it's still dangerous. So you can't tell me in a good conscience that I can be a hero if I don't even have one. I know. All Might told me the same thing ten months ago. Izuku finished. Well I'll have to admit, that had I not seen what I saw today I would have been inclined to believe that same trail of thought. Aizawa said. But your test results have given me many reasons to believe otherwise. The teacher noted. Now that he thought about it, he was actually starting to see some similarities between the boy and old acquaintance of his. Have you ever heard of Knuckle Duster? Aizawa asked. I think so dot 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 I sent he an old vigilante or something. Never really heard much about him other than how he was one of the crawler's allies. Izuku explained. 
He was Crawler's mentor and for decent part of Crawler's early career. He was also the powerhouse of the vigilante team, Aizawa explained, despite being quirkless. Aizawa finished. A quirkless vigilante. Hizuku gasped. Unfortunately the conversation between the two of them was cut short as the light started to flicker rapidly before the power was cut. Izuku started glancing around. He had hoped that his talk with Eraserhead wouldn't have lasted long so he could hunt the rogue Digimon but it looks like he was wrong. Stay behind me. The pro hero told him. Eraserhead was already getting down to business. He no doubt assumed they were being kidnapped by a villain in which case he would have technically been the one who would have more experience here, but this was no quirked villain. These were Digimon and they were Izuku's specialty now but Izuku had no choice at the moment but to comply with the man and not try and fight him at the moment. Unfortunately for him they had stumbled right into the spider's web, literally and figuratively. Izuku quickly realized that there were several Dokagumen, champion-level virus Digimon in the room. Individually they were very weak and Gilman or Black Agumen could have handled them with relative ease if not needing a little teamwork to do it, but with this much they would definitely need Seo or Marcus to help them. Luckily for Izuku, he had already seen a familiar head of purple hair outside the doorway. He sure hoped Seo had planned otherwise he would have to expose himself to the hero. Shadow Aizawa was a pro underground hero for a long time. He had seen his fair share of strange and outright twisted scenarios in his years but nothing quite like this. He never saw anything like these spider creatures before nor did he understand what happened to him and Izuku. The place they were in looked similar to his classroom but there were so many things wrong with it. The room itself seemed to have expanded significantly. The desks were now pitch black and were all over the place, in the ceiling, the wall and even the floor. The world itself had now acquired a blood-red tint to it with the only splotch of color being the glowing green moss-like substance that littered the edge of the walls. He was unnerved by this warped version of his class, but he kept his poker face up even when he noticed the several dozen giant spiders crawling all over the walls with purple venom dripping from their mouths and two dinosaurs, one black and one red bound by spider webs. He would have preferred being alone but with his student here he had to make sure Izuku was safe. Strangely enough the boy didn't seem the least bit scared like he imagined he would be. Aizawa tried to back away slowly, gently ushering Izuku to do the same while he kept an eye on the spiders moving above them. Pop, Aizawa felt something hit his foot. Looking down he saw a familiar looking purple ball, the same kind of ball he saw Minera Minta. He heard a few more pops and was able to trace it to its source. There his suspicions were confirmed as he saw the small form of Minta surrounded by the spiders, unfazed by them. A more irrational person might have immediately assumed it was the child, Aizawa was no such person. He noticed right away the lack of emotion and the blank expression on Minda's face and he also saw the movement in the shadows behind the boy. He used his quirk to follow the figure's movements but nothing happened. That's when he heard it, one of the spiders let out a menacing shriek as it jumped from its hiding spit towards Izuku. Aizawa tried to react but as he was about to launch his capture scarf, white webbing shot out from the shadows behind Minda and immobilized him alongside the purple balls. Aizawa could only watch helpless as the spider reached Izuku dot 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 and the boy punched it out of the air. The force was enough to send the spider flying into the fall but more surprisingly to Aizawa, Izuku's fist was now glowing an emerald green as small ones and zero sparkled from it. What the heck, Aizawa thought. The boy wasn't quirkless. Izuku did his best to keep calm in his current situation. Marcus would surely understand if he explained he revealed himself to save him and his teacher from being spider food. However he wasn't too sure about Aizawa. Hopefully when this was over he could erase the teacher's memory of this event without many repercussions. Izuku took out his Digivus and attempted to use the DNA charge to summon Graumann when a purple ball flew and stuck the Digivus to a nearby wall. Sorry little sleuth but you're not getting out of this so easily. A voice called from behind Minta. Izuku saw a lady in red dress and a purple witch-like hat appear from behind Minta. She was the one causing this Izuku realized. Minta had the corrupted Digisoul but he wasn't in control anymore. He was now a puppet to his own negative emotions while she manipulated him like the puppet master. Izuku, I'd suggest you run and try and get help from someone else in the school. Aizawa told him as he managed to free himself. Now hold them off. The teacher told him. No. Izuku answered simply much to his teacher's shock. I'm not leaving you behind. The boy then saw a smirk appeared on Izuku's face. The side we already have back up. He told the teacher. Ugh. Fastcommon screamed as Seo threw him at the lady. The strange woman in question barely had time to react as the small brown koala-like Digimon struck her and grabbed onto her body, pulling her hair. I hate this plan. The Digimon screamed as the lady tried to pry him off of her. Black Gabumon and Lunamon ran and wild she was distracted, Big Gabumon charging at the small boy knocking him out while Lunamon used her mini ice blast to freeze the webbing holding Aizawa, Gilman and Black Agumon. Gilman roared as his instincts took over as he broke the webbing and stood up with Black Agumon doing the same. Aizawa did his best to ignore the insanity that was surrounding him. He shattered the now frozen balls and webbing freeing him once more and with that the hero immediately got to work helping the little monsters fend off the giant spiders. Aizawa used his capture scarf to grab one of the nearby spiders and immediately flung it around like wrecking ball, damaging other nearby spiders. He took care not to strike dinosaurs or the other creatures around him. 
It was evident they were on his side or at the very least out to get the spiders. The red dinosaur and the black and white beast had taken to clawing at the bugs while the black dino simply fired flaming shots at them. The little bunny-like creature was also freezing any nearby spiders, making it easier for them shatter if only barely. Although while Izuku was doing his best to square off against these creatures with nothing but his bare hands, the lady eventually managed to get Faskaman off her face, flinging the little koala into the floor where the small Digimon was seemingly caught as he fell to the ground. That didn't mean the lady was free though as Seo appeared right behind her and drop kicked her in the face. Seo's pure purple DNA charge flowed through her body as she landed away from the lady. I heard first day of schools were supposed to be rough but this seems a bit excessive, Seo said as she readied her digivus. She glanced at her partner noticing that Izuku had yet to regain his digivus, nevertheless she used hers and evolved her partner. Lunaman had just been jumped another spider and the little Digimon had prepared to jump out of the way when she was engulfed in the light and evolved into Leximan. Leximan sidestepped the spider before she struck it with a swift kick sending it barreling into a few others and transforming them back into eggs. Izuku had managed to recover his digivus and had immediately regrouped alongside Aizawa and Seo. Aizawa had used his capture scarf to pull the unconscious mind away from the chaos. The partner Digimon joined as well having taken out all the other champions with the human's help. You two better explain yourselves when this over. Aizawa scolded them. Really? Seo said in disbelief. Would you rather we leave you for dead? Honestly you people really are evolving backwards. She spat. Aizawa would have responded had Gilman not let out a loud roar as he stared at where the strange lady was. Gilman hadn't stopped focusing on her and for good reason. She had recovered from Seo's surprise attack and was now laughing hysterically at them. Did I hit her too hard? Seo wondered. It wouldn't have been the first time she or Izuku overdid it. Oh please, as if a little girl like you could hurt me. A lady said. That boot mark on your face says otherwise lady. Black Agumon deadpanned. She clearly didn't find it amusing and the lizard's quip only seemed to make her more irritated. Don't you dare group me with you weaklings. She growled as she started to glow and her body morphed. Aizawa activated his quirk in an attempt to stop her from transforming but this was to no avail. The once slender woman was now growing rapidly both in height and size. Two horns sprout from her head as her legs retract into her body only to be replaced by six spider legs. Her arms and hands also become slightly chubbier. Eric Inaman, Ultimate Level Virus Digimon. The Digivuses rang in unison. An Ultimate Digimon. The two sleuths gasped. Now do you understand your place? The Ultimate Digimon gloated. Do you know yours? Leximan asked as she jumped and sucker punched the Ultimate Digimon in her face. Gilman didn't hesitate and immediately charged at her, with Izuku activating his DNA charge. Safe to they were lucky the fight happened in the digital version of UA, as the side of the building exploded as Grauman pushed Eric Inaman outside. Now outside Grauman and Leximan did their best to match the Ultimate while the humans looked on. The fight was not exactly their best. The wide open space had served to help Grauman move around more freely but so too did his opponent. The ultimate Digimon despite being so massive was easily evading his and Leximan's attacks. The B-Digimon looked on helplessly as they watched their partners get their tails handed to them. Eric Inaman avoided the strike of Grauman's plasma blades by jumping above the Dino's face where she released a powerful acid attack on his head, blinding the creature. Grauman screamed in pain as thrashed wildly around accidentally smacking Leximan with his tail. Eric Inaman used this to her opportunity and managed to web up Rabbit Champion. She then did the same to Grauman. We've got to help them. Izuku muttered as he and Seo tried to take off after their partners only to both be stopped by Aizawa's capture scarf. Much to their dismay the pro wasn't going to let them go into a suicide fight against that thing and he wasn't giving them much choice. Eric Inaman noticed their struggling and easily made her way back to the classroom. Now tell me, which of you should I eat first? The Digimon giggled menacingly as she corned the teacher and the students. The Agumon in his time accompanying Izuku had seen many things, however as he now stared at the giant ultimate level spider Digimon he couldn't help but feel a familiar sense of dread crawling up his spine. He was once again outclassed in terms of power. He was once again helpless as someone stronger than him threatened to kill him and his family. He was too weak. Grauman lay down outside nearly unconscious with his eyes badly damaged by acid of the ultimate spider. Leximan was webbed up and immobile from the silk made by the same creature. Right now the small black Dino could only watch as the monster slowly encroached on them. Izuku and Seo were out of options as their two strongest Digimon were subdued. Despite that Izuku never let his stance falter he wasn't going down with a fight and Seo was right behind her pro hero of UA was not faring any better but he was also not going to accept defeat. His own quirk was virtually useless in this situation and he also had an unconscious student on his back to attend to. You know what interesting. The creature told them with a grin as she watched their last stand. You can't hide the amount of fear that's oozing out of you all. It is so good that I'm almost tempted to spare you, she said, before launching another web at them and pinning them to the wall. Almost, I think my babies will prefer to eat you instead. She said eerily as her torso split open and various streams of data flew out of her body and towards the eggs that had remained scattered around the class. The data wrapped around the eggs before the eggs transformed back into smaller versions of the Dokagumon, Kotokagumon. Well it's official, arachnophobes were right all along. Seo deadpanned, 
You're making jokes at a time like this, Aizawa asked her. The strongest heroes are the ones who always smile, Izuku repeated. Then have no fear, for I am, here. A voice called out as the room collapsed as a familiar streak of red and orange entered the room. The streak landed directly on top of the ultimate spider punching her in the thorax. The slider queen didn't even get a chance to react as the figure grabbed her by her hair and threw her out the window. Seo and Izuku could only watch as Marcus turned to them with a smile on his face before he went to deal the ultimate level Digimon. I think he did it way better than All Might, Seo said. No, Izuku said. If you two are done talking, Aizawa scolded them. He then motioned with his eyes to the baby spiders that were still in the room. Oh right, we got to deal with them, Seo realized. However, before either side could make a move, a blue blur entered the room, smacking several of the spiders and destroying them almost instantly. When the blur stopped, it revealed itself to be an anthropomorphic blue dog with red boxing gloves and a red headband. Oh, hey, Gaiman. Long time no see, Seo said cheerfully. Gaiman merely saluted them before he proceeded to beat the webbing out of those spiders. Eric Henneman recovered after she was thrown out the room. She had been taken by surprise by one of those humans' allies. She wouldn't let that happen again. She heard the sound of someone landing behind her and immediately turned to shoot them with acid only for a fist to slam into her face before she could even open her mouth. Staggered back, dazed by the attack. You better have good reason for attacking my sleuths, a voice said, otherwise you're going to be in for a world of hurt. Eric Henneman looked up at the source of the voice and her eyes widened. The person standing in front of her was none other than Marcus Damon. The ultimate level Digimon had known he was around but her boss had assured her they would have distracted him so she could attack. This was bad the spider realized that she couldn't form any coherent words to respond to him. Silence is not a good enough answer, Marcus said as he took out his Digivus, a burning orange aura of Digisol forming around his body, far brighter and with more power than either Izuku or Seos. Marcus pressed his palm on the Digivus as he called forth his partner. The spider queen could only watch as bright light emerge from the device. The entire area was covered in flames as the light grew to the size of that mountain hero before it shattered revealing a humongous figure. Air Kinnaman saw the red eyes of the mega-level Digimon that had formed in front of her. She turned tail and tried to flee, leaping over the flames as she tried to run away from the mega. The mega Digimon didn't even bother chasing as he simply lifted up an arm. While Air Kinnaman tried to run leaping from building to building, she felt several tremors as she fled. The next thing she knew she was leaping to another building before a golden sword emerged from the ground and pierced her body, killing her in an instant. Was that really much overkill necessary? A voice told Marcus from his Digivus. Lalaman, she almost killed the kids. She's lucky I even gave the chance to explain herself and didn't destroy her in one punch. Marcus told the Digimon. Fair point. Now I suggest you check up on them. The Digimon told him. What were the two of you thinking? Aizawa scolded Izuku and Seo. The blue dog had beaten off the spiders and was now aiding the other monsters leaving the humans alone. First of you two aren't allowed to be involved with villain fights without a lice. Oh would you shut up already? Seo interrupted catching the teacher off guard. The only person out of place here is you. That wasn't some quirk moron in spandex running about, that was a Digimon. Seo told him. And we cyber sleuths are employed by their king to deal with them so you're interfering with our work. That's enough Seo. Marcus ordered from behind. The younger hacker immediately shut up as he approached them. I'll explain to him what happened. You two just go and wait for me to finish. Marcus told them. Seo would have argued if it was anyone else but seeing as it was Marcus, she complied as did Izuku. The two left to go and gather up their Digimon while Marcus talked with Aizawa. My apologies. Kids these days certainly are excitable. Marcus said. I will have to expel her for doing such reckless actions and endangering herself. Aizawa muttered. Now dot 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 is it really necessary to do so on the first day? Marcus said. And I suppose you support such reckless behavior. The teacher told him. Well I did train them. Though perhaps I'll have to push then a little harder. Marcus told him. If that's the case then I assume you've had them out fighting despite not having a license. Aizawa theorized. Yep. Marcus answered calmly. Then I'd recommend that you don't do it again unless you want me to risk being locked. The teacher told him. On what counts? Marcus asked. Endangering minors, encouraging misuse of quirks and illegal vigilantism. Aizawa said. No I don't think that will be necessary. Marcus said as he put in a pair of sunglasses. Izuku and Seo who had now returned with their Digimon saw him putting it on and quickly put on their goggles. Aizawa seemed to realize something was up as he saw a glow start to form around Marcus. The teacher attempted to use his quirk to erase the old man's assumed quirk but then Marcus pulled out a strange device and before Aizawa could react, the device flashed and blinded him. Shadow Aizawa woke up to the sound of someone knocking on the door. Opening his eyes he found that he was in his sleeping bag on the floor by his desk. He heard the knocking again and asked who it was. It was Izuku Midoriya. Oh right, he had to speak with him after class, the teacher remembered. The discussion had been uneventful. Aizawa had talked to Midoriya about his above average scores in the test and Midoriya had chalked it up to him just working hard. The boy even mentioned that he was inspired by Nucladester to become the first quirkless hero and he wasn't going to let anyone stop him. 
For some reason the boy despite having answered all his questions correctly still seemed a little nervous but Aizawa just chalked it up to him being such a strict teacher. Izuku thanked him and then left to head home while Aizawa just looked at him trying to figure out why something fell off about their conversation. Either way the teacher would worry about that later dot 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 for now he had to check if Minta was still in school. When Midoriya stepped out of the classroom, he immediately opened a portal to the world between. Once he was there he let out a breath he didn't even realize he was holding. He couldn't believe he had been able to speak to his homeroom teacher so well despite the memory erasure. He had done it before alongside Seo but that was just against random witnesses to the Digimon outbreak. It was very different when he did it to someone he knew he would have to interact with for the next couple of years. Taking a deep breath he walked back into the digital version of the classroom. It was still a wreck from the fight but Marcus and few others were busy handling the repairs around the school's cyberspace. His mentor's Digimon team was busy cleaning the debris while a small green caterpillar typed away on the laptop, restoring the walls and ceiling that they broke. Marcus himself was talking to a young woman, who Izuku had seen pop by Hyuti every now and then, and she was accompanied by two cats, one black and one white. When Marcus noticed Izuku he motioned for him to come over. Myri, this is Izuku, my newest cyber sleuth, Marcus said as he introduced his sleuth. Izuku, this Myri, she's an acquaintance of mine, Marcus said. Pleasure to meet you, young Midoriya, Myri said with a smirk as she extended her hand to greet him. Nice to meet you too. Well Marcus I've gathered as much data as I could. I should be finished with my analysis by the morning so feel free to stop by for it dot 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 or maybe you can send one of your sleuths to collect it. She said as she walked off, disappearing from the world between. Um who exactly was that? Izuku asked. She's someone we're very lucky to have as an ally. Marcus told him. An expert in many fields of the digital world, she has knowledge in everything from helping you train your Digimon to attain alternate forms, to synthesizing new equipment to developing new hacking skills. She also has a special memory center where you can go and spare against simulated Digimon to become stronger. He told Izuku. So why are you now telling me about her? Izuku asked. Truth be told, she had asked me to keep her a secret. Something about waiting for fate to set things in motion. She loves being cryptic but she's reliable so I allow it. Just don't drink any coffee she makes. No man lives to tell the tale after that. Marcus shuddered. Noted. Izuku said. Hey where's Seo? He asked. Mina stirred from his sleep. He felt sore all over his body. What had happened? Opening his eyes Mina noticed two things. One was that there was a cute girl with purple hair leaning over him and two there was a cute girl with purple hair leaning over who didn't seem enraged and trying to thrash him. Naturally his first response was something cool and charismatic. He screamed and backed away only to hitting his head on the lockers behind. Ouch. He winced as he rubbed his head. I don't suppose you want me to you to the nurse's office. The girl asked. No no. That won't be necessary. Mina said. Okay. She answered. So are you a hero student? She asked. I. Mina started. The memories of before suddenly came to him. He had been expelled on the first day by the teacher. I was a hero student. He confessed. I got expelled on the first day. He told her. Oh. She said. Can I ask why? I didn't do too well in the quirk test. He answered. I see. She answered. Are you doing all right? She asked him. Yeah dot 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 it's just I worked so hard to get here and all of that hard work and effort just got flushed down the toilet because I couldn't compete with the rest of the students. Minda complained. Now I'll never get any girls. He said softly. You want to be a hero to get girls. The girl said with a raised eyebrow. That's um dot 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 that's. Can I ask why you feel you need to be a hero to get girls? She asked him. Well if he was a hero then people would think I was cool. He answered. And maybe if they thought I was cool they would want to be my friend. He explained. So in other words you want to be a hero so you won't be lonely. She summarized. I guess that's one way of saying it. Minda said. I'm sure if people got to know the real you, they would find you cool. The girl remarked. Are you saying I'm cool? He asked the girl. I can't say that. I barely know you. She answered. But if I got to know you dot 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 then maybe I might think so. She explained. That's wow dot 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 and no girl has ever told me that. He said excitedly. Well I wonder why. She said nervously. No clue. He answered. So I guess I should introduce myself then. My name is Sayo. A girl said. Minta. He answered. The two exchanged some contact information and after a small conversation Seo was on her way. As Seo left the area, Aizawa entered the room shortly after. Unimpressed. I thought you would have blown his head off just now. Lunaman told her partner. In risk fueling the fire. I just needed him to feel better. Seo told the rookie. I know what it's like to be lonely. She told them. Well I'm glad you can be at least somewhat reasonable sometime. Should I be offended by that? Seo asked her partner. Lunaman merely laughed in response as the duo headed back to meet Marcus and the others. Izuku dragged himself home after he finished talking to Aizawa. Their fight with the ultimate Digimon had gone on longer than expected so when he left he found himself in Seo as some of the last set of students on the compound. He was lucky that due his recent activities with Hyuti these past few months his mother was used to him arriving home later now so he didn't worry about being questioned on his whereabouts. Although his mother was curious about his first day at school and he was all too happy to recount the events minus Bakugo being in the same class as him and the Digimon. 
They had dinner, enjoying some family time while they watched news, before Izuku headed to his room to get some rest. While he sat by his desk he had looked over his schedule for UA, before he sent it to Marcus and Seo. He would need them to help him come up with a good routine to accommodate for his hero training now. Speaking of hero training, Izuku grimaced as he looked at his class tomorrow. He would have his first heroics class with All Might tomorrow. He didn't know whether he should feel ecstatic about the prospect of meeting his idol again or worried. The last meeting with All Might had ended with him having his dreams crushed and if his theories were correct, it also resulted in the slime villain escaping and causing a ruckus with Bakugo. Now that he was thinking about he wondered if it was a good idea to go to school tomorrow. He looked around his room as he let his mind run astray. He had taken down a lot of his All Might merchandise. He still had a lot of it but now he didn't have as much as before. Glancing over he noticed one shelf in particular. This shelf had several items on it, drawing book, a stuffed dolphin and a hat. The stuffed dolphin in particular had made him smile. It was a technically a thank you gift he had received on his first outing with Seo. The mission was not exactly something he was expecting it be. The client was little girl no younger than 10 years old. She had requested their help in finding a dog, her brother's dog to be precise. The dog had been going around biting and tearing her stuffed dolphin. Understandably upset with the dog she opened the door and let him out, however she didn't anticipate that the dog would run away. When her brother had returned home and found his dog gone, she lied and told him the worse. It had been fine at first but now her brother was getting noticeably more depressed, so she hired Izuku and Seo to go and track the dog down. It was fairly easy to do so in Izuku's opinion especially when Gilman was a good tracker on his own and they were able to return the dog in no time. The girl had been so relieved about getting the dog back. She even offered to give the duo all her savings as way to repay them, but Seo and Izuku had refused. The little girl wouldn't take no for an answer though and she was actually rather stubborn about paying them back. They eventually relented when she offered to give them her stuffed dolphin as payment, saying that she didn't it was a good idea keeping it around since she knew the dolphin would be torn to pieces by the dog. The duo reluctantly accepted it and Seo had told Izuku to take the stuffed toy as it was his partner who found it. A week later while the two of them were relaxing in the park after a training session, they saw the girl and her brother playing fetch with dog, smiling, laughing and enjoying a good time. It was honestly really nice to watch and now whenever he looked at the dolphin, he couldn't help but think back to that moment. He remembered how good it felt when he helped those kids. Sure it wasn't anything big or extravagant like what All Might did in debut where he saved hundreds of people but it was something. Marcus had told him that being hero didn't always mean saving people physically but also helping them emotionally too. He knew he was doing that much, and with Marcus's help he had now reached a point where he could physically help as well. Looking at the huty coat hanging on his door Izuku felt his resolve strengthen. He would take a page out of All Might's book and go and face them tomorrow with a smile on his face, even if he had a lot of fear behind it. He would prove himself just as capable as anyone else there. Black Agumon and Gilman looked on as they felt Izuku's resolve. The boy had promptly wished them good night before heading off to bed, his exhaustion finally kicking in. The two Dinos were also tired as well and Gilman was ready to call it a night after he devoured some of Lunaman's special Gilman bread. Black Agumon wished his partner good night as well and went to sleep. However the Black Dino was finding it rather difficult to fall asleep especially after today. He didn't know about the others but he was feeling really pathetic about not being useful to them during the attack. Getting out of his sleeping area, the digital monster made his way into the world between before he used a link to go to Seo's home. When the Digimon arrived at his destination, he found himself on a sandy beach-like area. He always found it strange why Seo would choose to decorate her room like this, but Lunaman explained that it was how her human had always known it. While Izuku's room was in the apartment he shared with his mother, Seo's home was actually in the cyber world in between. Within the cyber world she had been able to renovate and design her room in such a way that it could never be replicated in the human world. Part of her home was a standard living space, living room, kitchen, bedroom and bathroom, but the other half was literally a coastline with the beach and her house apparently being lodged into the side of cliff. She had taken a good bit of time to program and to manipulate the world into looking like this which for a human was very impressive, but enough marveling. Black Agumon made his way over to bedrooms taking care not be too loud and disturb anyone carelessly. He only needed to meet one person in particular. As he approached the bedrooms, he could hear the soft snores from the human girl. Glancing inside he found that she was in deep sleep, hugging Lunaman like a stuffed toy while Faskaman was nestled alongside her like a pillow. He looked around the room but found there was one Digimon missing, Black Gabumon. The virus rookie felt a hand tap him on his shoulder and Biagumon almost let out a startled cry had the other Digimon not held his snout shut. Turning around slowly, Biagumon saw Biagumon standing there with a glare. The beast-type Digimon didn't let him explain, instead opting to drag the Dino back to the beach area. The Gabumon finally let him go as he went to the kitchen area and grabbed some sirloin steak for him and his guest before coming back to see the Dino. I take it something's bothering you, the Gabumon said as he bit into his steak. That obvious, huh? The Gabumon responded as he bit into his own. Perks of being a black, you know how others like you think. The Gabumon answered. I'm gonna assume it was the fight that troubled you. He continued. Yeah, I don't really like feeling so helpless. The Gabumon explained. 
No one does, B. Gabumon said. Have you tried digivolving into your champion form? He asked. Honestly, no, B. Agumon replied nervously. Really? How come? B. Gabumon inquired. Well, it's not that I haven't tried. I just don't want to. And I'm repeating myself dot 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 how come? I'm, I'm afraid. The Dino finally confessed. B. Gabumon stared him for a moment. He took another bite of the sirloin and then continued staring at his friend. You're, afraid, he repeated, of digivolving. He asked, pretty stupid, huh? The Dino said, it's a lot of stupid, for obvious reasons, but I assume you have a good reason, because I know you aren't a coward. Well, the last time I digivolved into my champion form was when I became Deltaman, in case you forgot I went berserk and totally lost myself. He confessed, you're afraid you'll go out of control again. Black Gabumon theorized, it was a justifiable reason, you transform and then you lose control. You aren't aware of what's going on, practically losing yourself almost entirely, and then when you do wake up, when you finally snap out of it all that's left is a gap in your memories leading you to only speculate what happened. It was something a lot of Digimon especially virus types like themselves, faced when they started attaining higher levels. Yeah, I've come close to unintentionally digivolving before, one time Izuku was actually able to get me to start evolving, but I was so scared about what would happen I broke the evolution midway and returned to my rookie form. I haven't tried evolving since then. I see, B. Gabumon said. Well, if you want my honest opinion, I'd say you should try and strengthen yourself through intense training. It might take a while, especially since you refuse to evolve, but it has been stated that Digimon can strengthen them without evolving. Evolution helps speed up the process significantly, but it is still doable. Have you heard of the Tamer ranking system? B. Gabumon shook his head. The Tamer ranking system was system used in the digital city to rank the strength and power of the different humans and Digimon who fought together. You had normal, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. B. Gabumon explained. Most tamers progress to other levels by showing their strength in battle, usually by defeating increasingly more powerful Digimon. I feel like you should be going somewhere with this story. B. Agumon deadpanned. I was getting to that. The bronze, silver, and gold tests were usually overseen by either very power ultimates or megas, however the platinum test was a different story. B. Gabumon said. While the platinum test was overseen by a mega, Imperialdroman Paladin Mode, the founder of the Royal Knights, he was not the only one. It was accompanied by two in-training Digimon not unlike the ones in Tojman's daycare and performing the test. Wait, wait, hold up. Black Agumon said in disbelief. You're telling me that two babies were on par with one of the strongest known Mega Digimon in existence. Believe me, they earned their spot. Those little guys could have hit like a truck. I remember seeing them knock down Digimon that would easily squash to Arakenemon like the bug she was. And if you don't believe me, ask Seo herself when she wakes up. Black Gabumon said. I'll keep that in mind. Black Agumon said. Thanks for the pep talk. I'll talk to Marcus and see if he has any training regimes I can try. He said as he prepared to leave. One more thing, Black Gabumon said. Most Digimon end up evolving into a form that reflects their desires and goals. Skullgerman if recall was once a champion Digimon who thought about nothing but fighting and as a result when it evolved into the ultimate it had lost all intelligence making it a mindless beast. It stands to reason that if he had something else to fight for, perhaps maybe friends or loved ones like you do, he could evolve into a more controlled form. Just saying, Black Gabumon added. I'll keep that in mind then. Black Agumon said, Good night, good night, Black Agumon. Marcus arrived in front of Myrie's booth early in the morning. It was a quaint little fortune-telling place that the woman ran. People would come to see her, she would predict their future or maybe even just give them some advice. Of course he was aware of the true nature of the booth and its owner. He opened a portal through the door and stepped inside the booth. In the real world the fortune-teller's booth consisted of a single room divided in two. The first half was the side the public saw beyond the window, the second was an area behind the curtain where people assumed Myrie rested when not working. A table with a crystal ball, two chairs and a black cat napping in the corner. However in the digital version the small and rather quaint room was actually more massive. It was triple the size it was in the real world and was littered with monitors across the walls. Myrie's desk was in the center of the room and more monitors were practically floating around it, orbiting it like the planets to the sun. The monitors however never flew low enough for Marcus to hit his head and more often than not any that would hit always moved to avoid collision. I'm surprised you came. Lyari told him as she appeared from out of nowhere. I was expecting your cyber sleuths but instead I got a saver. She chuckled. Oh well I suppose I'll meet them later in another chapter. She said to herself. Can you at least try and not be so cryptic? Marcus deadpanned. Not even Yushim talked in so many riddles and he was an old man back then. My apologies. Myrie said. I've analyzed the data like you asked. Eric Henneman didn't arrive here through normal means. She explained. I figured as much. No Digimon in their right mind would try and stir up trouble with humans if they know what's good for them. He grumbled. Do you have any idea where she came from? He asked. Unfortunately no. Myrie explained. Although I'm running several scans right now. I have a few suspects as well as the standard set, you know the dark ocean, dark area and such. The rather obvious evil places. Considering that those locations are infamous for having the most malicious of Digimon, I'd say they are well worth the scrutiny. Marcus answered. 
that's fair, Mayuri answered as she sat by her desk and started typing at her computer. I've also looked into that request you made regarding the signal jammer you encountered. Yeah, I almost didn't make it in time to help Izuku and Seo because someone or something jammed the signal to my communicator. It was only after I had Agumon fly me out of the area did I get back reception. He explained calmly, but internally he was anything but. Whoever had jammed the signal had either knowingly or unknowingly delayed his arrival to help his sleuths and that had almost cost them their lives. He wasn't going to be merciful when he found who or whatever had done it. Well, while I can't exactly make something that can avoid a signal jam, I was able to make this. Myri said as she opened up a program on one of her monitors. This hacking skill is a tracker of sorts. If either you or the sleuths enter an area where your communicators are being jammed, it will automatically start tracking the source of the interference so you can neutralize it. Myri explained. All it requires is that the user has a Digimon who can track, which you all have. Impressive, Marcus said as he handed over his Digivus and allowed her to load the data. I'll be sure to send the kids later so you can install it for them. He told her, give them this, Myri said as she pressed a few more keys. It's a hyperlink to my lab. They should install it in their PC or in Hudi since it will make traveling here a lot easier. She explained, I'll keep that in mind. Now if you'll excuse me I'm going to field test this hacking skill, Marcus said as he left the booth in a hurry. Thanks again, he said as he teleported out of the area. After the old man had left, Myri turned and looked back at her monitors displaying the problem Digimon. Herakinemon were an abnormal Digimon, being among the few to have human DNA mixed within their code. It made the Digimon an interesting one to say the least because while there were humanoid Digimon like the Angels or Legendary Warriors, Herakinemon was easily able to pass herself off as an actual human compared to the others. Sure, the emergence of quirks in this world had made things easier, but a lot of humanoid Digimon would still look out of place unless they made the excuse of being in costume. Speaking of which, Quirks was another story in and of itself. She had never seen anything like it before and while it had her curious studying them would be a nightmare. Perhaps if she found someone she could trust she would offer them in exchange, her research on other worlds for their research on Quirks. It would take a while but she was sure there might be some scientist out there that she could work with. Seo looked over the BBS in Hudi's cafe for a relatively simple case. She hadn't had a chance to do any yesterday with the attack but she figured she could try and squeeze one in this morning before she went to class and had to socialize with people. Looking over at the real world BBS she noted how one in particular was submitted by a very familiar customer in the cafe. The user Gentle Hearts had requested that she pick up some special tea blends and deliver it to them, agreeing to pay them back with a delivery fee. Seeing as the job was nothing more than a supply run Seo agreed to do it. It hadn't taken her long to gather the tea blends. For one Lokaman was more than happy to take her across the city with ease to get the right ingredients and then take her the address of the client. When she arrived it was a rather small apartment, very comfy looking. Seo knocked on the door and waited. After a while the door opened and a short young woman with red hair appeared. Special delivery, Seo said as she presented the tea blends. I take it you're making breakfast for the gentleman. She remarked casually to the young woman. Yeah, we had a late night run yesterday at Jiro's pharmacy. The woman commented offhandedly. Ugh, I hate those guys. They refuse to sell medicine to quirkless customers always saying they're out of stock but when a person with a quirk comes and asks for the same medicine they suddenly have a spare bottle in the back. Seo ranted. Yeah well we found those spare bottles yesterday when we raided the place, however while filming some pro heroes showed up so we had to make a run for it. He took a pretty bad hit but we still managed to escape without a hitch so that's a plus. The lady told her. Well that's good to hear, Seo said. By the way they took down his videos again. You should probably start re-uploading them later once the heat dies down and I'd be more than willing to assist in that if you tell me the story about what happened. We'll see, the woman said. She was about to close the door when she noticed Seo's uniform. You a, hi, she asked. Huh, oh yeah, I'm going there now, Seo said with little to no enthusiasm. Sound like you don't like it there. The woman noted with a grimace on her face. She had her own share of bad memories in school and she most certainly didn't want to relive them. It's the second day and if I'm being honest I never really liked the whole classroom deal. Back where I grew up we learned things in the most practical of ways and got move around a lot more. Also didn't help that Seo didn't really have much in common with the students there but she wouldn't say that out loud. Well if you ever need to talk about it I'll be here. See you around Seo and take care. The woman said. Later Mazeba and the same to you. The purple haired girl said as she went to the cyber world and called Lokaman to take her to school. She wondered how the others were doing. She hadn't called Minda yet to check up on him so she figured she might do that while on her way to school. Mina or Minda stood nervously in front of the entrance to UA. He considered himself very lucky to be here. He had managed to meet a rather cute girl yesterday and his room teacher had met him right after and told him he would be re-enrolled into the hero course program. Of course there was a downside to this. His teacher had informed him that he was being very merciful with his enrollment so Minda had to go above and beyond now that he was back. Plus Ultra the man had said. Mr. Aizawa had also warned that if he underperformed, misbehaved in manner or received any valid complaints on Minda, then the pop-off user would not receive any mercy the second time. The boy's phone suddenly rang breaking his train of thought. Looking down he noticed the name of the caller show up and his heart almost skipped a beat. 
He quickly answered the phone before it could cut off. Hey, hey, Seo. He said nervously. Hi, Minta. Just calling to check up on you and see how things are going. She told him. Are you enrolling in any new schools nearby? She asked. Well, funny you should mention that. Minta said. One short explanation later. So you're still in the hero course? That's good. She said. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time. I reckon you should head inside and make sure you aren't late. She added. I'll see you around lunchtime. She finished before hanging up. Mida just stared at his phone after she hung up. Awesome I'm having lunch with a babe. He thought his various. 0.18 plus scenarios started running through his mind. However before he could land fully in his fantasy, someone bumped into him from behind. Turns out it was none other than Izuku Midoriya, the quirkless kid who placed in the top 5 in the test yesterday. Oh sorry about that. Midoriya apologized before offering a hand. Hey your mind to write. He noted. Another explanation later and Midoriya was brought up to speed. Wow so the expulsion is still on your record. Izuku asked. Yeah, I can't afford to mess up now. If I know what's good for me. Minda told him. Well I can understand where he's coming from. Izuku replied. A hero doesn't get second chances if they mess up. Izuku said as he reflected on yesterday's events. While it was true he and Seo had thought they were prepared they clearly weren't. So far they had been relying on mainly using their strongest Digimon to beat their enemies and while that was effective at the time, sudden appearance of the ultimate had proven that maybe they weren't as strong as they thought they were. There were two ways they could close the gap now. The first would be by training themselves to reach higher levels, but that would take time and Izuku still wasn't sure if his partners could go further. Grauman right now felt like he was at the end of his line and Black Agumon struggled to evolve into a champion. That left them with the second option, fighter smarter as well as harder. As much as he hated to admit, Eric Eneman had actually smarted them. She blinded his partner and webbed up Seos, leaving them as easy pickings. They would need to come with better plans and tactics for dealing with those kinds of situations. Unbeknownst to Izuku he had actually started muttering as he thought about ideas for training and he had unknowingly mentioned Seos' name leading to a rather hilarious reaction from Minda who now wanted to know if Izuku was trying to claim his girl. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku becomes Cyber Sleuth. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Rush Alias for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section.